We need like an improv, you know how improv, like before they go on stage, they're like, cat, 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 you know, like they do like some kind of exercise. <laughs> like five like, minds. Something really stupid. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, come on, Catherine, it's going to be okay. It's going to be fun, you know. All right. <laughs> Welcome to Everyone's Doing Better Than Me, uh, the podcast where we have on our successful friends and tell them how their successes really trigger our insecurities. And then we try to drag them down to our level. Uh, my name is Eve Ellenbogen, and I'm here with my co-host. Catherine Henson. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was um, way <laughs> happier than anything I think I've ever heard you do. I've, I've been doing, well, you know, it was a little bit of, it's woo-woo mixed with Mortal Kombat. You know what I mean? When they go, whoopsie, like, it's like that, but like with Wim Hof breathing and meditation. Do they, <laughs> do they do that in Mortal Kombat? Yeah, when when there's like a really good move. Yeah, they're like, whoopsie. I I was, what was I doing? I was watching, oh, I, I this is what I do to unwind. Mm-hmm. I like play spades on my phone because- okay. You know, uh, it, when I got sent away to that place where the scrambled egg thing happened, right. I, I will never <laughs> understand. Just just yeah. like elaborate one more sentence because not everybody's heard every episode. Well, okay, I got, I got sent to this Mormon therapeutic boarding school after I ran away from home because my mom and I had creative differences when I was right. growing up. And you so- were smoking meth. Your mom wasn't into it. She was like, creatively, okay. that's not very good for me. And you All were right. like, well, I'm an artist. Sm- Say again. I smoked meth afterwards. That was, that was a product of... Meth first two. No, no. no. You no. ran away. You ran away. I ran away. I ran away to Chico, California, and it caused a you know an uproar. And um, uproar. Like, my and family got, was so obnoxious about me running away. Guys, be they too. were. They really were. No, yeah. and and I uh, and then I got picked up by escorts, not the sexy kind, but uh, the. And then they took me to a wilderness treatment center, followed by the Mormon therapeutic boarding school, where. This weird scrambled egg thing happened, but also it was like a punishment based therapy system, but yes. they let us for some reason, the two activities that w- main activities that we did when we got to like pick what we wanted to do uh, was crocheting mm-hmm. and playing spades. What fucking oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, <Wow. great. laughs> retirement home in the hood. I swear to God like that. <laughs> I, I I don't know why they let us play space. I really don't like, I mean, I understand it's like not like an aggressive game, but it's not like not an aggressive game, you know? I don't know like, how space is played. I don't even know anything about it. By the way, if you want to hear the scrambled egg story, which is one of my favorite horrifying, sad stories of all time, that is in the Kevin William Reed episode. That, that story, I mean, it really changed my awareness of creative punishment. Do you know, like it's like, mm, yeah. Because the, and oh, the thing yeah. is, it was incidental. They didn't even intend to punish you with that, but no. it's horrible. Anyway, so spades. What is spades? So spades. It's well, it's fun too. Mm-hmm. It it kind of reminds me of bridge, which I also played for a while. Right. Um, <laughs> you're from, you're from the 1950s, basically. I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, look at the shirt. Look at the shirt. I I'm Bugsy shirt. Malone. You know. <laughs> playing bridge and spades guys, when she's getting loose all right yeah. she's getting loose today <laughs> getting real crazy but spades it's like you have a partner and you both like bid on how many i i do they call them tricks in there they might just call them tricks in bridge i don't remember honestly because i haven't seen people in a long time but you and a partner you both um sort of you look at your cards and you decide how many tricks you can take and if you don't meet your amount you know you lose all those points it's, a, it's just a whole thing. So it's like, it's a quiet game, but it can get very like, you know, passively, incredibly aggressive, right? Like, especially if you're like, if your partner fucks up, you're like, what the fuck is your price? So we're like doing that, but we're all like 15, you know? Right. <laughs> and, and like in this <laughs> right. place right. where it's like, why is spades the game of choice? You know, it wasn't like gin rummy. It was like spades. I love gin rummy. And I play that whenever I have a friend in person, which at this point has been a long time. Yeah. But. It's such a good game. Um, but I play spades and my point is, is like, I, I won't buy the app because I have no money, but I, I, it was showing me a TikTok commercial in between each round. Right. And it's just like some fucking, you know, 22 year old pretending to be 16, holding a phone in front of his face. And I was like, that exact image is like why I can't like, 
it, there's something about the herd mentality of all these apps and how they've created this gesture. Like, you know what this gesture is when my hand is in front of my face and my fist is sort of like looking like I'm trying to choke myself to death, but that's <laughs> me holding my phone. Like I can't, there's something about it. I just can't do it. Like I knowing whenever I see somebody's face that close, I'm like, I know how you were holding your phone. What does the world come to? Like, I can't. That is so funny. I mean, meanwhile, it's like, my Instagram is just pictures of me taken with me holding my phone, right? Like, I mean, I am such a selfie queen that my family, when we're like together, they're like, Eve, you do it. Because I always know how to hold the phone to get everybody in and the good I angle. Know. No, but you gotta, you gotta embrace that, I think, because mm-hmm. no one's ever going to take a photo of you again. No one's ever going to take a picture of you again. You got to know your angle. No, but, but see, but, you, you, but here's what you... So when I was growing up, like, and not to make it all about me, but, but like, I grew up on the internet, right? So right. like, uh, like when it was the wild, wild west and shit, and I did take photos of me, but I made it, I did very artistic photos. And this was before selfie sticks and tripods and fucking iPhones and shit. So it's like, yo, I will take a photo of me, but you won't know I took the photo of me is what I'm saying. Right. Like, I, I'm not right. going to hold yeah. that shit. Yeah. I'm a fucking artist. I'm an artist. All right. Yeah, you're yeah. so above it. You take a selfie that nobody knows is a selfie. My name's Catherine, and I follow the trends, but I make it, like, appear that I'm not. I just make it seem right. like I'm crazy. I was with a friend, <laughs> and they took a photo of me. I have friends still. Even in the digital age, it's like, all right, Catherine, you're, you're one of us. Don't think that you're better. By the way, can I... Have I no friend. You say... <laughs> I, I have no friend. Um, I, I have to tell you what I've been doing because uh, can I, can I change? Is it okay for, do I have your consent to change from selfies and TikTok to a different subject? Yeah. But my God, if you don't, today's <laughs> the day I kill myself. <laughs> yeah. I've been looking for apartments in New York. I, 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 I do know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause <laughs> I've given my very strong opinions about exactly where you should live. And for the record, for the record, I have been right thus far. I still don't think you've looked in exactly the neighborhoods I've told you to look in. When I went to Crown Heights proper the other day, I was like, oh, like I'm going to get murdered in the day. Like I, you know, I got off the subway and I walked. Exhilarating. It's just like, you know, and I've been thinking about this is that it's like, <laughs> it's that um, New York is like, or not just New York, but like the U S it's like in other countries when it's like cheap rent, it's like the rooms are smaller or, you know, like it's not as convenient in the U S when you're paying less money, you're just like, I'll just live closer to where the murders by shooting happen. You know, like, Oh, I think I, I, I want a bigger room and I don't make that much money. So like, I'll get it. I just might get shot and killed by accident. I'll not even on gun. purpose. What'd you say? I'll get a gun. <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about like, maybe I should get a gun. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, where is that coming from? Like, I don't want to get a gun, but that's what it is to live in this country. Like, and I left here. I mean, I moved out of New York proper when I was like 18. I mean, I didn't even live in New York proper, but I like hung out more in Manhattan, went up to college, came back and visited, would stay with my cousin in the village, which like at the time it's like, it's still like artsy and there's like cool artist owned stores. So you think it's what New York really is. Cause I wasn't around to see what it was like in the eighties. Um, and so then now is like the first time that I'm really like immersing myself in like, like Brooklyn. Like I lived in Inwood, but Inwood was fine. You know, it was like a family area. Now it's like Brooklyn during COVID like right after Trump when gun violence was, up. it's just, it's just like this really weird vibe where, I've been in Brooklyn Heights, which is kind of like being in Connecticut, but like in Brooklyn, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, it's like where all the fucking rich people live. And I, mm, yeah, I'm staying in Brooklyn and yeah, sure. It's a bit dicey sometimes, you know, but it's not, it's like not dicey at all. And so then going into the other parts of Brooklyn in the day to go look the, at the, the parts that you can afford, the parts that you actually yeah. technically belong in given totally. your financial situation. Totally. And then I'm like, I'm like, oh, I guess I could live here. And I just like hope I, it's not even about being raped. It's not even about being raped. It's about being caught as a, an innocent bystander in a drive-by shooting. Because also it's like, I mean, you can kind of be raped anywhere. You know, like, I mean. That's the beauty of rape, huh? <laughs> yeah. As a woman, I just feel like I can get raped anywhere. Like, don't limit me, you know, but like. <laughs> don't with, tell like, me what I can and cannot do. <laughs> yeah. 
yes, totally. I mean, because it's just like, please, like that never goes away. It's not even, but it's like being mugged, being shot by accident. Those are my big like mm, things I don't really want in an apartment. Um, you know, like more than like, you know, um, oh, I hope it has like a bathtub. You know, I'm like, oh, I hope it's in a place I don't get murdered. Yeah. I actually, are you checking the water pressure when you're going places? Oh no, I haven't been. Oh, you got to do that. I mean, it, it's I, you're probably less. Uh, I don't know, at, at risk, no. if you will. Well, I'm because into, yeah. people already live there, but I would right, say, okay, like, okay. so in theory, you would assume that means like the shower works and hot water is available. But like, that's something I've learned. You always, always check because- That's great. There's, there's shit that you don't, that they, that, I mean, again, you're looking for a room, so it's different, but like, they try to fuck you. I mean, you know, they try to yeah. fuck you. They don't tell you that they're, they're gonna start building, you know, an arena outside of your window. <laughs> Uh, when you sign a year long lease and you're like, what, what you, do I get tickets to the arena at least or no? Um, yeah. It's like a, it's a whole new experience. I mean, cause it's like, yeah. What? I mean, I don't know. Have you thought of like reaching on, you know, getting one step closer to your final form and like when asking about these apartments being like, so how's the gun violence over here? Like I've, told, I've started being like, what's the neighborhood like? And of course, most of the people I've interviewed with are guys and they're like, well, I, I've never had any problems, but I know I'm a guy. And I'm like, yeah, why am I asking? But no and one's going to tell you somebody got shot yesterday. No, what are you doing that? that I know. In the room. I know that like bed has had a rise in shootings. I mean, it's, and it's like, yeah, it's like gang related and it's not usually random, but like I watched a video of a shooting in bed but it was like, they shot the guy's hand. I'm like, these are amateurs, you know, <laughs> but it's like, but I, I watched, it was daylight. The guy was in his car. They kind of went around his car and just shot and ran away. And I'm like, what if I were standing next to the car with my groceries? You're a conservative stray bullet. Yeah, because that shit happens. I mean, that's, that's a sad way to go, too, man. I mean, like, exactly. straight, straight you weren't bullet. even targeted. You're just like, I know. A, you're just you're like collateral. some loser who was fucking waiting to buy weed and now you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Although now it's funny, weed is legal in New York. And so I used to kind of market against the building when I would walk in and kind of smell weed. It makes it just kind of seem really shitty. Literally have not been to one single building that doesn't smell like weed, except for the one I'm in right now in Connecticut of Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, well, you've been to my apartment that no longer exists, and uh, tank of weed. It's tank of it. Yeah, well, because you know everybody just hangs out on the stairs, you yeah. know, and like you know, I don't know. I, I got man, I, I don't know. I had neighbors from hell at one point, and it happened to be the super. So like really? a little, yeah. So like a little bit of weed, I'm kind of like whatever. But yeah, like no, I in my apartment, my last Brooklyn apartment, I lived in for five years. It was a small building. It was like 12 units. This is in Flatbush. And it, this was in, it, well, it's called Prospect Park South because it's like right between Flatbush and Kensington, just on the south side of the park. It's weird. Okay. Um, and it's like one row of blocks of apartments. And then when you cross Church Avenue, Victorian houses, it's fucking mental. Right. Um, but like, I, I remember when I moved in, I started actually making like a tree like you know like the police do right like like the wire because i realized there's 12 apartments i live in one of them there's 11 apartments and at least seven of them were occupied by people who were related and i was trying to figure out how they right. were related <laughs> like the guy below me was the son of the lady next to me and then her other like daughter-in-law lived moved into the other apartment on my floor and their kids were running like so this was over the course of five years Wait. and were they Jewish? Were they Hasidic? No, okay. Jamaican. So okay. uh, black Jews. No, I'm kidding. I have <laughs> Which, no by idea. the way, there are. Yeah. What'd you say? <laughs> yeah. Um, I said, I have no idea what I'm saying. But, right. um, they, they, but by the time I moved out, like the apartment was so cheap and I loved it, but it, it was like more of their family kept moving in the building and the super on the first floor, what they did was they the building had like um, a like courtyard area, right? Mm -hmm. Like between the, uh, that building and the other building. And if you, you could access it through the basement, they started throwing parties with subwoofers in the summer, yeah. subwoofers. Like, dude, this isn't like, like a little bit of music. This was like my windows were rattling, like rattling. Like a guy I was dating at the time, 
they had an apartment in the apartment next door to ours, which was not a subwoofer party, but somebody was banging a cowbell until 6 a.m. And he had to go work brunch. And he actually walked in there and was like, I need to work brunch. Like my bedroom is right pressed against your, your apartment. But these subwoofers, like, I remember I was what like, what do they say? What do they, they didn't say? give a shit? No, they did not care. And it was the super throwing the parties and then the entire building attending and other people. And I could give a fuck about the party. It was just like, right. like a little bit of music is like whatever, like music. Yeah. But it was the fact that it rad the bass was so aggressive that it rattled it, it. The apartment shook like that was where I was like, I can't sleep anywhere in the apartment. Like I can't go in the living room because the building right. is fucking shaking. That's and crazy. they didn't. And I never called the cops. You think I would have, You think, but that's my white guilt. That's my white guilt. Okay. I was oh, like, because no, they weren't white. No, no. Right. I was the only white person in the building. The other oh, white right. person moved out. <laughs> yes. um, and, and then their family right. moved in that apartment. And right. Cause I you mean, know that if you call the cops on the party, the cops might kill them. Well them, and then they'll kill me. Cause it's obviously me, you know, I mean like, <laughs> I, mean, I also I also had a bit of a run in like with my next door neighbor about a dog as well. They gave me their dog. They gave me their fucking dog. They had this pug that they would leave t- like they'd leave their front door open because that again, they were running the building, right? Like everybody like they were all related. So they left the door open so the kids could go back and forth. And they had a dog that was just tied up there. This is in the bit tied up. I could hear him howling and crying. It was the worst thing in the world. And then one day they knocked on my door and they were like, do you want the dog? And I didn't want the dog, but I was like, yeah, give me the fucking dog. Because I was going to, I, I, there's this animal rescue in that area called Sean Casey animal rescue. Tom Hardy got a dog there. They don't kill the dogs. They take the dogs. And I was like, I'm going to take him to this rescue. I considered keeping him, but it was just like, he was a pug who was so not used to being walked that we couldn't even get around the block. And I had a a dog that was like very, you know, healthy. So so whatever. I was like, yeah, give me the dog. And they're like, oh, you can just feed him chips or whatever. He'll eat anything. And I was just like, this is so fucking horrible. Give me your dog. I'll take your dog. So I went and I got the dog a fucking home. Right. Um, a year later. And basically what they said was like, it was their son's dog. And he went to Georgia and like left the dog and she couldn't take care of the dog. And I'm like, all right, fine. A year later, the son returned with his girlfriend from the South or whatever. And I was laying in my bed and I could hear like little noise puppy noises, puppy noises. And I was like, I was like, no, like there, I was like, there's no fucking way. There's no fuck. I was like, there was absolutely no fucking way. And I kept hearing it. And I was like, I'm not crazy. I hear, I hear dogs. So I knocked on the door and the son answers. And I was like, Hey man, what's up? Long time. No see blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, so like, I hear these noise. Like, did you get a puppy? And he's like two. And I'm like, Oh, and I'm like, okay, that's pretty, you know, all right. And I'm like, that's, you know, cause I, 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 I took your other dog, you know? And like, I, I went home and then I was like, I, and this was a very white lady thing to do when I think about it, but I was like thinking, okay, how do I deal with this? Because I'm fucking pissed because this wasn't my business until your mom made it my fucking business when she asked me if I would take your dog. Yeah. And then I took your dog and found it a home. And now you've got two new dogs. So now this has become my fucking pro like I'm pissed. So I was like, how do I maybe navigate this? So I was like, all right, you know what? I will look up like a list of things to consider before getting a dog. And I'll just be like, hey man, here's this list. I wish I would have thought about it before I got my dog because you know, dogs are for life. So I knock on the door, I give him this list and I'm like, just something to think about. Then his mom knocks on the door. She's like, we don't need this. And I was like, actually you do need this because you made it my problem. And then obviously beef ensued because- Did you say that? Yeah, because they they knocked on my door and gave me their dog. And now now they got two new dogs. And then they're acting like, oh, I shouldn't have a problem with this. I was like, fuck you. And how old was the son? He's probably, he was probably around my age. Like That is crazy. I mean, I get it. And it's like, yeah, if somebody were to put that out, let's say on the news, they'd be like this fucking white bitch neighbor. Well, but also it's like, well, it sounds like they were like abusing the dog. You know what but I mean? It's also like, like, it's like you gave me your dog. Like, I'll put it this way. If you did whatever you did with your dog and it never became my problem, I guess I don't have shit to say. I'm not going to knock on the door and give you any advice about anything. Right, I'm just right. going to sort of sadly from afar grieve for the animal that should have never been in your possession in the first place. But it's like, you knocked on my fucking door and gave me the dog. 
Like right. you met, like you were like, do you want to deal with this for us? Cause we don't want to fucking deal with it. So yeah. then I did. And then you got new dogs. Fuck you. Like <laughs> now I get to say something and I fucking hate these people. Obviously, like obviously you yeah. just triggered something because I'm like, you don't knock on my door and act like I'm the asshole. You're the asshole. Your family is the asshole. Her name was a vet. And like, you know what? Like it was all peachy, but it was like, fuck you, fuck your parties, fuck your subwoofer. And then I moved to Harlem. So I gentrified a new neighborhood. So <laughs> like, you know, whatever, so jokes on the world. It's funny that you're from like Nevada or California. I'm like, you were born in the sewers of New York City. Like you were born, you know what I mean? You weren't even born in like the village when with like artsy parents. You were born in like a preschool where you used to kick the shit out of people and you got fingered in the on the playground when you were nine my heart is beating so fast (laughs) (laughs) yeah like you are like a tough as because i would never do those things first of all the second i heard a subwoofer that's me gone you know like i just i cannot deal with that kind of shit like i just i can't sleep i would have like run back to my daddy's house and been like i can't live here you know like but then it's like then to like knock on the door and be like excuse me are you have more animals let me go print this shit out and i'm not saying you're wrong i'm just saying it's like i am terrified all the time of like getting killed in new york in general you know like somebody on the bus yesterday sat in front of me um and he was like picking his earwax and like pulling his mask on and off and whatever. And like, I'm vaccinated I and I have that. a mask on. Say again. I hate annoying people. I hate annoying people who- well, He was like keeping to himself, but I was just like- I don't care. It's annoying. And then I felt really bad, right? Cause he was obviously like homeless or whatever, like not well. And then I'm like, God, what? I'm like so classist and all this stuff. And then I'm like, you know, I'm just like, cause then you get in your head where like, it's like me thinking about like him giving me COVID, which he's not going to because I have the vaccine and I'm wearing a mask anyway, but it's like- then I'm like, it's a kind of different way of being like, oh, like, I don't want to be like contaminated by the same air, which is such a horrible way to see people. And so I'm just sitting there feeling so bad and trying to like, lose myself in my music. I was listening to like Brian Eno or something. But it's like, love it. Yeah, it's like, so I'm just sitting at me while he's like sharpening his like shard of glass to stab me in the neck. And I'm like, you know, it's like the homeless area people too, you know, all this shit. Like, but it's like, I mean, I, I told you the other day that I was sitting on the subway. There's like a crazy homeless dude at the other end. And then there's just me and one guy. So I sat across from the guy and I knew that the homeless dude was crazy, but it's like, no, they won't bother you. And I just told myself like, yeah, it's fine. And I looked at my phone for like 10, 20 seconds. And I look up and he's standing over me, looking at me. And I'm like, uh, and then he just just goes, oh, and like pretends to karate chop me. But if he had a knife, he could have just stabbed me. I mean, it would have just been over. See, I, you don't look mean enough yet, man. Like I, I like, this is what it is. I think I, I, I used to, and I, I remember when I went to India and in the beginning, I would smile at everyone. No, I would, no. you know, and, and people would fuck with me all the fucking time. I'd yeah. smile. I'd make eye contact. I, whatever. I remember being in Varanasi after I'd been there for like three or four months, maybe like five months at that point. And I had told people to go fuck themselves. I, you know, and just like, I was, I, I had to, you know, I had to people, someone threw himself on top of me on a bus that was crowded while everyone was sleeping so that no one would see. And I ended up, I turned around and I started fucking punching the shit out of him. And that was when he fucked up. So by this time I was in Varanasi, I was like, do not fuck with me. And I remember walking to the river alone along the river the, the fucking ganges alone at night which like never do you know what i mean like never do that <laughs> like you know that's where they burn the bodies and then put them in the river like mm. do you know what i mean like a like a dead mm. woman floating they'd be like oh yeah she must have died you know like it's not like weird to see a body in the river mm-hmm. um and i but i walked there alone at night and i remember feeling like if anybody fucking talks to me i will fucking kill them and I saw people look at me and I mean, a hundred people will talk to you. Not one person said a goddamn word. And I was like, Oh, I guess I've been here a while, but I don't have that in New York. I don't have a little bubble. You know, I don't seem like a, I'm like, Oh, it's like nice. And Oh, Brooklyn's really exciting. And Oh, wow. Wow. It's like a new world. And mm, COVID has been so hard. Like I feel so kind of sentimental about everything and people can smell it on me. And that's why I'm popular. I mean, I know that I, it's really, I don't know how to do, I don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, because like, I, I mean, I'm scared the woo woo is going to take it away from me a little bit, but I, I think I still got it. Like when people are walking you, too slow here. You fucking got it, man. You I'm like, like, I can feel it. I can feel the rage of like, get out of my way. Like, you know, and, I, and I'm not never going like, to get woo woo. You're never yeah. going to do that. 
No, and I, I don't have anywhere to be or on any sort of time schedule. So the fact that that's just so ingrained in me, yeah. but I just, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, cause like when you're talking about this gun stuff, I'm just sort of like, yeah. And, you know, I kind of feel like, okay. I know, yeah, I but like I hear you. It's bad though. It's bad. It that it's seems bad like thing. something t- to be worried about, but I'm like, you, you know what I mean? There's something yeah. in where I'm like, well, that's just, isn't that just the way it is? I mean, but that's think, like why um, we're so fucked up. You know what I mean? As a country, it's like, we're like, I, well, mean, I voted. Yeah. I voted. So whew, I am exhausted. I voted and I mm-hmm. talked to my friend and I have done everything I can. My hands are tied. You know, and it's like, that's the American way to be like, well, I guess it just has to be this way. And it's like literally yeah. every day there's a shooting. Like every day there's, a, and that's not like in Brooklyn. I mean, if they were reporting on like Brooklyn shootings, there would be like a fucking, like the New York Times would never not be about shootings. But it's like every day there's a mass shooting now that COVID's yeah. ending, you know? Um, yeah. And I, I just, I guess I've been away for so long and I come back and I'm like, somebody should do something. This is crazy. <laughs> you know, like yeah. we should like, we should make a law you know, that says it's harder to get a gun than like a Snapple, you know, it's so fucking, I mean, it's easier to get a gun than a Snapple, you know, because yeah. none of our carry Snapple Dude, anymore. Yeah, it's easier to get a gun than it is to get a Snapple. Like I, really? it's funny, I uh, because like hearing your response, because I know you're from New York or whatever, but like, and I think, you know, Daniel Muggleton, right? Yes. Yeah, we talked about yeah. yeah, he's an Australian comedian, whatever. And I did his podcast when I was there before everything went to shit and like the big point he brought up like that he was so fascinated with. And I was like, are we really driving this home? Which was just like, he was like, so, you know, we have healthcare here. So what do you do? And I was just like, hope I don't get sick. Like, what what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? What do I do? Like, what do you do? Like, and it's just amazing. Like what you just sort of grow. Like I have not yet been to the NHS or anything but it's like i guess to be like oh so if something goes wrong i can no no i don't trust it like i don't trust it well that's like i have like i've had a thing on my boob for like over a month it's like not alarming but it's not going away it looks like a bruise but it's probably like some kind of infection you know and it's like i i should go to the doctor and i have health care that's the great i have health, i have medicaid because i'm broke mm-hmm. and new york that's is a good like, one that's the yeah. good one you have. new york is like this great state where if you just don't if you just make no money they're like we'll actually give you really good health care yeah and i'm just like what am i supposed to use it no i'm supposed to die in the gutter like that's what happens oh, to yeah. people like me but it's just it's like i don't know it's such a fucked up place there's so much money i get so angry i see these people who like they own the brownstone the entire building for just them and their one child and they have like a sign in the window that says black lives matter and i'm like it's funny because a black family used to live there or like five because it's a whole fucking building and now you're three people and you've displaced all these black people, but you're like, but I care about your life. And it's like, Mm -hmm. but you really don't, you know? And I, and I don't know, I don't know what to, I don't know what they should be doing differently, but I just get angry all the time. But then also here I am in Brooklyn. I mean, I'm, I'm subletting. I haven't yet displaced anybody. I will soon, you know? Um, Well, you say you get angry, but not angry enough because if you were angry enough, you wouldn't be scared of a stray bullet. I'll tell you that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's interesting logic <laughs> yeah, i mean it's funny i was listening to the beginning of um uh oh, i was listening to dark side of the moon yesterday because i'm the cliche that i claim to be mm-hmm. um i listened to like dark side of the moon i listened to all of the wall i mean i just i love i love pink floyd and sometimes i just am like oh, that's what i need today i need pink floyd so i was listening to the beginning of that song um great gig in the sky you know when it's mm-hmm. like whoa, 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 whoa. like which is like uh, i've yeah, always like, what? <laughs> well it goes like this um and it's like a british man who you can just imagine chain smoking in like the 70s or something and he's in the background he's going oh no i'm not i'm not frightened of dying anytime will do really you know and he's like why should i be like and and i'm just thinking i was sitting there and i'm like who isn't afraid of dying you know i mean like uh, even you i know like it's like as much as you're like no not me it's like please if you weren't you would have done it you know um please well it, no you know what it, it's I, i've i've thought a lot about this i'm not afraid of dying i am afraid of not getting to do that like, is what dying is That's no, what, no, yeah. no i mean no it's it, like like if death were to happen it's more just like that i've wasted my time yes no i feel like i'm afraid of not getting to finish the story that i've I mean, I'm afraid that the story would end like now. And I'm like, no, no, no. There's a whole climactic scene that's supposed to happen that hasn't happened. Yet. This is all still in the like buildup, you know, but it's like, if you die today, 
or soon, it's like, well, I guess that was the whole thing. You know, so but that's what I mean. And we also say they're not afraid of dying. It's like, it's like, I don't, it's not so much about, I mean, yes, it would suck to be like dying on the street. But I think that the part that you don't want to lose is like, you don't want to lose your life. Like, that's why you're afraid. It's not the death. It's the life that you're missing. But anyway. Very deep, very deep wanna, before our first guest. I don't want to get <laughs> shot in Brooklyn is my point. <laughs> you oh. know? I think all you need by your side to prevent that is someone like our guest, Shayla, Shayla Lang, uh, because she dominates men for a living. And I yeah, think that's true. You just you just go next to her big, strong side and and she's got you covered. Well, it's a good thing you brought her up because she's actually waiting to enter this conversation. Should we let her in? That's it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Of course, I know. of course. I've been enjoying uh, the episodes, so. Oh. Yeah. Oh, she listens. Look at listen. Eve's. I do, uh, I do my homework. She just came. She just came. Um, <laughs> I don't know these so like, like, oh, really? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> was it me or Catherine? I mean, no, we were both. We, it's not a competition, you know. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> um, all right. So uh, welcome to our guests. Um, Shayla Lang, who we'll go more into later, um, sitting here on Zoom looking fucking fantastic, but I don't want to get It's upset. upsetting. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I don't want to get into it. We can talk about <laughs> until I can yell at you, but in a few minutes. Um, <laughs> so we're, let's start off with Catherine. Catherine. <laughs> Hello, Catherine. Hi. Tell me, open up. Who hurt you this week? You know who hurt me? That bitch Marie Kondo. That fucking. <laughs> no one's ever Kondo. said that before. No one's no, ever. You know what? That no, bitch you know Marie what? <laughs> yeah, it's it, I. I. I take one. I, I take one moment seriously with her, and then my entire weekend unravels. It's like I, everything had to be done. Everything had to be done, and it had to be done immediately. I lost hours of my life folding underwear like yeah you know, and socks this. and reorganizing it and and trying to invest in drawers and I was like listening to her TED talks and you know the way she tells you to like tidy your life is like the exact opposite of how I recently had to get rid of all of my shit mm -hmm. like you're supposed to start with clothes and hold each item and fill it with love I started with just like grab everything of value that's left and put it in a box and make sure I get it in like two years and Wait, then I don't understand why now, because you've known about Marie Kondo for so long. Like, why is it just hitting you? Because I'm trying to fit things, uh, more things than, than, than allows in, in the place. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm yeah. specifically trying to fit all of Mark's belongings in three drawers that are the size of like lipstick containers. Right. So it's not really like, oh. It's not you trying to like fit your stuff in your, it's you trying to like Marie Kondo mark so that he takes up like as little space as possible <laughs> yeah, in your yeah. apartment so that you can just like spread out right. over everything. Okay. Got yeah. it. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've got like 16 different types of leather jackets that need room to breathe. So, um, Wait, you're you like know. passive aggressive Marie Kondoing. You're like, I think you shouldn't keep this because it really doesn't seem to spark joy in your life is that what you're doing i did do that i did do that there's a sweatshirt in the trash right now i'm like it's time and but like meanwhile you know i've got like a mountain of shit and then i try to get him into it i'm like so where do you want your socks he's like i don't want to talk about where my socks go just tell me where they go and i will put them there and i'm like but then i was like we're gonna have a folding lesson so this no. is like really hard for, yeah, because I'm like, I'm not going to fucking do all this and then see a pile of shit over there. But does like, he want to do it? Well, what he wants to do is just, we, we actually are the same this way. We, we toss things. Like yeah. if, if it were up to him, there'd be a corner for trash and clothes and that would be the <laughs> trash clothes corner. Right. And like, and then we'd exist that way. And like everything else can look nice. He was like, we should be a design team. And I'm like, that's insane. No one wants a trash corner. Did he say that? <laughs> um, we should be a design team? Yeah. Yeah. But I think he was kidding. I mean, oh, okay. not anymore. Like, we both sort of lost our fucking minds. So um, <laughs> was ketamine involved in that conversation? Get away. Isn't it always? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I, uh, yeah. So uh, fucking Marie Kondo. I mean, like that's, you didn't hear from me, actually. Remember when you were messaging me all day and I couldn't find my phone because I was Marie Kondoing right. my life? 
I was actually yeah. really proud of you. I was like, I messaged you some stuff about the podcast or whatever, or I think about like looking for apartments and you didn't respond. And I was like, good for her. Like she's got things, you know, she's like not freaking out about stuff. She's obviously like, maybe she's like going for a walk in London and like getting into the city, but you're just like, Mark, you need to clean your shit up. Mark, you need to fold your socks. Like just like freaking out and your husband, you're like someone who goes to therapy to come home and tell their partner what their problems are. You're like, my yeah. therapist thinks that you really need to work on your boundaries. Like, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds right. No, that yeah. sounds right. I mean, like, this got so aggressive that I decided I had to change the, like, stand on my TV back to the original stand so it would fit in a different place, but I couldn't find the screws that I saved. So then I was hunting for screws in yeah. London. That's like, easy. like a... Do you know what I mean? Like, why? Why? You know, but it, 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 it was injected. So fuck her, man. Like, she ruined my weekend, but everything looks great. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's the thing about Marie Kondo. I mean, you, I watched that show tidying up or whatever on Netflix during COVID as because I don't even have a place where I like really officially live. I'm like, like subletting, looking for like a new home base, crying about every, you know, just like making all, you know, journaling about like how like I really need to settle in and it's the first time in years that I'll have a home, you know, whatever. And um, so I was watching that show as though it applied to me. Um, and uh, people like really resent her in the beginning. They're just like this fucking sweet, little Japanese woman you know and then they become yeah. racist a little bit like, well Japanese people don't understand you know and it's like <laughs> just I'm yeah. speaking for other people here not me um I love I'm just projecting racism out so that I can say <laughs> things that are a little bit racist but um <laughs> she sounds like ice cream or like those little macaroons like she sounds like yes. Yes. joy and colors like a perfectly constructed delicate yeah. configuration yeah yeah. I agree. you know something I know a lot about actually so <laughs> Look at you. I love how today you're just like really getting like fun with like flipping your hair back it's like the this is Catherine on meditation it's just like <laughs> you know like just free and kind of more um physical instead of just like sitting like this stressed out rocking back and forth um well, on, on on that note uh who hurt you this week Eve why are you not flipping your hair I am flipping my hair. Just you're so self-involved about your own hair. You don't mm, know this. Fair. Um, fair. Actually, no, I haven't been flipping my hair because it's in a really perfect place right now. So I want it to stay the way it mm. is. Um, but I, um, <laughs> it was actually somebody yesterday. I went to go look at an apartment, um, which was nice. It was just like every other apartment though, where the bedroom was like a tiny shoe box. And you walk outside and you're like, will I live to get to the subway? Who knows? But it's only 8.50. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, he, you know, we sat down, he was a very nice guy. We had this like nice conversation. And then he said to me, so what do you do for fun? I was like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> do people have fun? I think I said that out loud, which is probably why I'm not going to get the apartment. And um, <laughs> it's, I was just like, uh, um, what do, okay. I was like, uh, fun. Well, before COVID, I used to read a lot. I don't read now. Um, and I just like, I, I was, I couldn't come up with anything. It was so sad. <laughs> it's like, I don't, you, you, you didn't yeah. mention talking your suicidal friend off of a ledge twice a week. Like, come on, that's oh. fun. I have fun. Yeah, I'm like, I'm fucking riveted every time we do that. That's kind of like masturbation. It's like the kind of fun you don't want to oh, tell everybody yeah. about, you know, I'm like, yeah. mm. <laughs> I love it when my friends are like going to hang themselves when I can swoop in and rescue them. <laughs> um, you know, and I do think you do love it. I do think you do love it a little. I mean, <sighs> shut up. I, um, <laughs> <laughs> is it fun though? Is it fun? I mean, it's like, it's really crazy. Cause I'm just like, I, I don't know. Like, I, mean, I thought that like being a comedian, meant that I never had to answer that question again. But the truth is, <laughs> like, I don't, I find comedy fun, but that's like a job, you know, it's like, a, it's like liking your job and also I haven't done it in a year. And, um, and then podcast, what did you say? Unemployed is one. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And that is actually kind of fun. And then podcast <laughs> is like, is like fun, but also becoming a job in a good way. So I'm like, what do I, and I don't do it like all the time, you know, I'm like, I mean, literally, I think the only thing I do that's fun is like talk to you when we're not podcasting. And sometimes we laugh and we go, we got to fucking mention this in the podcast and then we never do. And, yeah, we forget because I'm high. 
You know, it's, I'm actually thinking, I don't know what I do for fun. I don't want to answer this question. I don't actually want to go here. This is way too. Um, it made me fucked up. It made me go I know, I, 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 I'm in a, I'm in a good place. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about fun, fun. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> then I was like, God, what was life before like this era where you, now you're like supposed to be productive all the time and constantly working on your stupid fucking dreams. You mm-hmm. used to just go, I have a job and then I play frisbee, you know, or like whatever you did on the weekends. Um, you know, oh, I collect, you know, leaves and press them in books and I really enjoy it. I'm into mycology and I go on mushroom hunting expeditions. But now it's like, I, I'm like, am I supposed to be enjoying my time? I, I thought I was supposed to be no. using it productively. Anyway, so that's uh, something that I will um, probably ponder. Lose more sleep over? Well, I finally have been able to sleep um, by... That's fun. Oh, I really, yeah. It was, uh, Shayla, it's been a, a crazy time. Last week, I didn't, I didn't sleep, like, at all because I was stressing about moving. And so I had to, like, you know, start using, you know, topical CBD oil and, like, massaging it into my muscles, taking magnesium, taking valerian, drinking tea like I had to like take care of myself like some kind of animal um you know to, like apply self-care <laughs> so this is a good uh, little segue here Shayla who uh you are a guest and then we were talking about the a way I could summarize what you do and I've already like I'm like oh fuck but you're <laughs> you're a you I'm run. a dominatrix you're a dominatrix thank you I'm I'm a dominatrix. Like, <laughs> yeah like before because before I said to Catherine, I was like, okay, so like this, and I'll, t- I'll tell you what I said, because it's not like, a, I don't think it's offensive. Maybe it, you tell me if I'm offensive. I said, so she has her own sex dungeon. And Catherine was like, no, don't say that. It's like, I mean, people like, have sex in that dungeon all the time. I've had a lot of sex in that dungeon, but uh, professionally, right. I don't think anybody's having sex in there. Okay. Uh, right. and just, it's that's, that's what we do for fun. We just take the, uh, the dungeon that we write off as a tax expense and we fuck in it. Um, you know what? That's a great. That's, that's brilliant. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing this. I, <laughs> let's hang out outside of the podcast. I mean, yeah. I just, I was gonna say like the way that Catherine said it to me, like it's not as made me feel like how I am to my father when he still calls Asian people Orientals because he <laughs> is 86 and he doesn't even yeah. mean it in a bad way. He's just like, yeah, Oriental people. And I'm like, dad, no, nobody says that. It's just about like you know. Anyway, but that's how I felt like so out of touch. When I said, well, I think the biggest push for it's not a sex dungeon is because like we're trying to break out of a uh, the vast, vast, vast majority of us aren't having penetrative sex with our clients. So we don't want to give them the wrong idea. I also don't want to give my mom the wrong idea that I am just like sucking dick willy nilly in a place with chains hanging from the ceiling. (laughs) Really, really willy nilly. -nilly. I love that. that It's like it's not a sex dungeon, mom. I'm not like I mean, mean, it it is, but it's not. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, okay. so. well, tell, tell, tell us, um, and we're going to get like way more in, into um, everything. Um, but what, um, who hurt you this past week? Is it oh, I'm so mad. I'm so yeah. mad about it. Uh, th- so, <laughs> you know, when your friends tell people, oh, you should be friends with this person because they'd be really cool and you guys would really get along. <laughs> That's how Catherine and I met. That's how I met. Well, yeah. I'm so I'm thrilled that it worked out for you. Wait, but your friend that entered that says something to this stranger, right? Normally, we'll text you or call you or right. arrange a brunch or something where you can get to know each other with that right. buffer, that safe buffer of your mm-hmm. is already established friendship. I get a text message out of the blue on Saturday night, being like, "Hey, uh, you know, so and so told me that we would be really good friends. Do you want to meet for coffee?" And I'm like, who are you? I don't know you. How old are you? Like, what, how did you vote in the last election? What do you do for a living? <laughs> now, the last time, this all no happens. Intro. No, no intro. None whatsoever. Just, hi, I'm Jessica. And uh, Jessica. You know, Sandra no. told me, I'm, I'm not using their real name. Oh, okay. I was like, here. But, fuck off with your <laughs> Jessica name. Sorry, okay. Sorry. Oh, her, her name is actually terrible and uh, kind of abrasive. And I'm just like, oh God, I don't need to know these in my life. Um, Wait, worse but, than Jessica. Jessica so too? the last time this happened, it was kind of a ploy for, I want to do what you do. And, right. but mm. I also don't want to pay for any of the classes that you personally offer or mm. anyone else. There's a lot of how to become a dominatrix on the internet. There's a t- I run a very long standing, long standing. It's about a year old. We have like five mm-hmm. volumes of how to do what we do. And I'm happy to do that. And for friends, I'm happy to just email you the files. You watch them. Don't waste my time. And right. so 
Uh, but I was like, look, if this is a also the last time it happened, I was tricked into eating a vegan grilled cheese, which I'm not interested in having ever again. <laughs> so I told her exactly this. I said, I, you know, if this is a how to get into sex work, um, I'll just email you. That's fine. I will not be tricked into another vegan grilled cheese. You know what you said? And, and it's literally what I said to her. That is literally what I said. And yes, it is. Right. And <laughs> she was like, no, no, it's not like that at all. I just, I'm really interested in, you know, uh, Sandra said that we would be, would get along really well. So if we could just have coffee and now she is, uh, I'm a recovering alcoholic and so are the rest of them, I assume. Mm -hmm. And so the best way now we're kind of obliged to be nice to other recovering alcoholics. Like they were nice to me when I was crazy and I was like first getting sober. So I have to be nice to them when they're first getting sober and be patient and, you know, to be kind and all those shitty things that you have to do. Um, so <laughs> I was like, great, I'm going to make a meeting next week uh, if you want to come. And she's like, oh, well, we could just get coffee. And I'm like, fuck, like this is my one defense, because in a meeting, I don't have to talk to you. We can just sit right. next to each other. I fulfilled my duty and then we're done. Right. And uh, she goes, no, let's get coffee. And I was like, fuck, OK, so I'm I'm an early riser. Right. I get up, you know, like six, seven in the morning. Okay. Wow. wow. And uh, well, it's because the days are at all. Yes, well, the days are no. I, this is the list you purely know? for lizard reasons. It is because there is no sunlight in New York, and I have to absorb every shred of it. So, like when the sun is up, I am up. Right. Okay. And and uh, so I told her I was like, well, let's have breakfast at like seven a.m. And she's like, okay, that's fine. I'll just go to bed early. I thought she would turn me down because of that. I just I right. tried everything. And, <laughs> Oh, so now I have to have lunch with this woman that I've never met. And I'm, I'm just going to sit there and be like, what oh, who are you? Why are we that's an experiment? This? Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. And it sucks because it's like, and you, I guess she's, she's getting sober or she is sober or whatever. Yeah. It sucks that like, that, um, that's your, that's the trap. It's like, it's like a built in, you can't refuse. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like garbage. You, yeah. Well, like you could, you could, I could. you were a bad person, but you're not. Yeah. So like, you know, we'll just add that to the list of things for me to hate you for, because you're yeah. also nice. But yeah. <laughs> That's also how I met Catherine. She was like, please, can we get a coffee? I need oh, this. Give me a fucking and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like totally the opposite. So it was like, you're really going to like Catherine. And I was like, don't fucking tell me, you know, it's like, I get like really shitty, even though it's like, it's like knowing Catherine, like what a nice fit. Like, of course I would like Catherine, but I was just like, yuck, don't match make me with another female comedian just because it's like, I can make friends on my own. How dare you? Totally. You don't know me. And then they were like spot on and she came in crazed. Like I'm coming off of Kennedy, you know, like, of course, <laughs> wearing like a, like an ankle, like leather coat um, in Scotland and then, and then bombed. Uh, and I was like, I love Thank her. you. you know, I love that part of the story. I love that part of the story. Never leave that part out, ever. For the love of God. Watching her face. Well, it puts you at ease immediately. You're like, okay, yeah, I can't be friends with this person. Yeah. <laughs> if you'd crushed, we wouldn't have this podcast. You know, I would have been like, That's no, funny. I need to be the alpha. No, but, the, but of course I know that she's like amazing. It was just like, you know, I, I bombed too, my God. And then she didn't even bomb. You know, it was just that she was standing really close to the front row talking about um, working at a, a dungeon. And they were like, and then she was like, meth, ah! like just, and talking about like fucking <laughs> out her pubic hairs on meth and, mm. you know, the, in, in Scotland. The glory people, days, the glory yeah. days. <laughs> you know, people just need, they need two feet between themselves and the comedian pussies. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, but, but I, I appreciate that you don't want that. And I wouldn't want that either. And I've had people try that too, because I come off as a very friendly person. Um, but, uh, I don't have any kind of like sobriety thing that bonds me with strangers. So, so you I, get to be like a lizard person with no guilt. I just, this is amazing. Like, I'm so jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I've still been roped into it, but I am like, you know what? I'm really busy. You know, I don't, like, whatever. Like I, I, I don't, because I've, I've been there and then you're like, oh, suddenly my life is taken over by this person. I don't even know or like, anyway. Mm -hmm. Did you miss she just gave you a comp? She's already, she's complimented you before we've complimented her. <laughs> Why would you, you said I'm she's, like, I'm you get to be the lizard person without guilt. So she's jealous. Well, jealous. I need more. Direct. It's a compliment. No, I need, mean, yeah. You know, I'm sorry that Taylor and I are just really hitting it off here. Um, <laughs> Well, that's actually how Catherine opened this up. She texted me and said, Hey, I have this, this friend that I do a podcast with, and I think you'd really get along. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And actually, you know, I, I, I didn't want to like ruin it, but Eve is Jessica and I'm sorry. She's oh, this is the worst. Okay. All right. So can we, can we move our breakfast oh on Thursday? I- that would have been <laughs> such a great joke. Like to be like, actually big reveal. It's me, you know, and, and, but no, we didn't. It's a callback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you want to know what I did um, this weekend? I hung out with one of our former podcast guests, who's Catherine's friend, um, and we got um, lunch. So, and it was at a vegan place, but it was, oh, it, was no. still, it was a good yeah. like I got a salad, I got a falafel ball salad, so it was all right. Um, Eve's Eve's gonna make her way through all the cool people that I I know since I can't be around them. So you're next, Jayla. You're next. Yeah. If you want someone um, to um, go have sex. She's already got your clothes and now she's coming for your friends. Like, is this yeah. <laughs> a single white female moment? Like, I know. So we're just going to merge at the end and then I'm going to have very large breasts and I'm going to get to be officially Jewish. So I, it's really like really. Big. There you go. Yeah. yeah they're they're you big. Tell but, from just seeing my face, unless you could, I don't know, maybe you're like a boob sensor. You're like, just, you seem like someone who has really huge tits. Um, well, but I mean, not not to your boobs are great, Eve. But it's just like in this, I have to be honest. Shayla is hurting both of us in the boob yeah. realm. I mean, I if saw- you have been if you have been online and if yeah. you've seen any of her work, there oh, they there they oh. are. I I don't know. You, wow. do, you money can't buy those, even though it probably money did, did buy They're these. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and. But Money whoever Cannon it is, did. yeah, Canon did, and and w- maybe will again. Will, will but- again, absolutely. I'm trying to have the tits of a 25 year old all the way into my 70s. This How old is like a 25 year old? Do what? You look like a 25 year old, and she oh, wants thanks. to know. Yeah, how old are you? That. I'm 31. Yeah, you do look like you're. You look like a like a 23, 25, but you yeah. speak like someone who's not a cunt. So I knew you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Very spry. You look like fresh out of the factory. I'm not even gonna lie. Well, it's I've also like- got the Zoom like auto adjust my camera, so it gives me that sort of like um, Days of Our Lives Vaseline look. <laughs> and, uh, I, I went ahead and turned that option on. <laughs> yeah, your 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 hair looks great. I mean, yeah. it's like a, a perfect shade of like blonde white. Yeah. Right? I've always wanted. Is, that. is it like electric blonde? I know. I could never pull it off, I and I always thought, no, I'll you leave could. It- you, you could, could definitely pull it up, Catherine. I, I think now. both of you could. I really do. Oh my god, she's Shayla. already doing this. I know. Isn't this upsetting? I haven't even gotten to get pissed <laughs> off yet, and she's just like, "No, you can do the hair. You can do. The, you can pull off that really? thing." And you think so? No, no. it's god. no, uh, babe. Yeah, you go, Shayla. Shayla, you've been hurting people with how you are, and yeah. not literally. I mean, literally, yes, literally. Yeah, that's that's in the people. job description. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, but it, it's like, the amount of empowerment that you have. I mean. It, it also just from looking at you online, but knowing you as a person, you're very much in tune with your sexuality and just your stance as like a person and a woman. So mm-hmm. that's something to envy because mine is like a roller coaster half the time. I don't even feel like a woman. I mean, I, I, I don't even think I really sound like one either. I, I'm something floating um, in the ether. But in the time that I've known you, you've opened your own dungeon, which isn't even like like other dungeons like aesthetically you, it, it is designed immaculate like i wish my home looked like it <laughs> beautiful and which means you have taste which is something like i'd say 90 percent of the world does not have so you're hot your tits are great you have taste you're a business owner you're empowered you own it you also like represent your community in a way that people you know welcome you they they want to hear from you it, you speak out against injustices, but without being insufferable. I've been on your Twitter, <laughs> like, which is most women can't do. Most people can't do, but you can do it. It's and you're a community leader. Like these are all things like I can't say I could even try to be as a stand up comedian. And you have a wish list of shit that people buy for you. So fuck you. You're getting presents. <laughs> and one more thing that I've just picked up on in like the short time we've been talking you're also really fucking funny. And I'm like, that's, oh, yeah. you don't get to be funny too. No, like, thanks. No. It's because I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like for me and Catherine, relatable. funny is like all we really have. I mean, Catherine yeah. also has like style and stuff like that, but it's like, like you're all these things. Like, it, when I meet someone who's like really hot and like business motivated and then funny and like personable and cool. And I'm like, ah, uh, I don't like this, you know? Like, I don't, this isn't right. Yeah, well, she, I, I, I told you earlier, 
she posted this like really sexy photo of something that like if I put it on, if I put it on, I'd be like, hello, somebody like I'm trapped, you know, like I, I wouldn't know what to <laughs> even do in the outfit. And you took a photo of you in the outfit. And then your caption was about to take a shit on your dad. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like well, that's my kind of caption. I love it. You know, it's it, you're you're quick, you're smart, you're funny. It, everything Eve said. Um, I, and I just, I, I don't believe I, well, also, also, you know, you have embraced, I guess, like your demons, if you will, like in the time I've known you, both of us have stopped drinking. Um, mm -hmm. and you've done so again, in a way that seems like supportive and not insufferable because I had around the time when I was starting to think about not drinking, I remember I messaged you and you were very welcoming without being overbearing. I, I made so many non-friends who took my phone number who were trying to pressure me to go to meetings like you have to go you have to go you have to go and I was like I met you yesterday but you were like hey this is an option for you if you want it and if not you know I'm here and like that's I think what people really need like you you do things it seems without judgment um you know and kind of you know presenting things to people without forcing them unless they want to be forced which you get paid to do so fuck yeah you. <laughs> yeah you weren't paying me so i wasn't going to drag you to meetings that yeah. was the whole shtick so basically it's like yeah you're all those things and you've like grown as a human being you fucking yeah. you know you, you goddamn <laughs> cut um okay so wait, what's I, your... I think she likes it she likes I'm, it Look, i'm really doing... i'm really enjoying this you guys this is <laughs> oh i'm just gonna record this and use this as my alarm when i wake up in the morning it's just like you've really grown as a person and you're like, fuck yeah and i'm gonna do more of that today <laughs> yeah well so what's your reaction to like all of this all of these accusations Oh, <laughs> uh, this is, this is slander and I won't stand for it. Um, I, well, and that's the, I mean, that's the thing. I, I guess I never set out to do any of these things. I was just desperate in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. like the quitting drinking. I was desperate. I had $8 to my name and I was drunk all of the time and I was in an abusive relationship and I was like, okay, well, something needs to change. This is the thing I can change now. And when it came down to the dungeon stuff, it was okay, well, something needs to change. And, you know, real estate is relatively cheap. Um, it is. So, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, well, the biggest problem was I, I moved into a place the first, the first dungeon I had, cause I've actually moved dungeons in January. But uh, the first thing was, it was a building that had no, was not permitted at all. And was run by this dude who was like 26 or 27. And he told me, he goes, oh, you have to keep the service elevator door closed because we needed to save money. So we didn't pull permits because we were running really close to budget. And he goes, don't worry, it's all up to code. I'm like, of course it's up to code. So wow. when you move into buildings like that, yeah, real estate is incredibly cheap. It was right. outrageously cheap um, and uh, nothing ever worked, but that's fine. That's how you start and that's how you grow. And that's, you know, when it gets to the point where you're like, fuck this, I'm sick of only having two outlets and having to flip the breaker every five and a half minutes. I mean, I can't get the gimp to do it because he's chained to the wall. So you have to like put on a robe and go out in the hallway because you have neighbors and you don't want to just expose yourself to them. So you put the robe on, you <laughs> not for free in the hallway at least. in your stilettos and you flip the breaker and then you scream at the gimp. You're like, are the lights back on? And so that was, I moved uh, and luckily it was still COVID when I moved, luckily COVID, uh, thank God for that. <laughs> Uh, have, so real estate was still cheap. Do you have like a legit g gimp, like someone chained to the wall? Uh, dur uh, at that time I did. And I, right now I have a gimp that I don't really tie up so much. He gets a little claustrophobic, but he walks my dog. He does my laundry. <laughs> um, Do you hear this? Do you hear this shit? This is like a, so this is like a world that obviously, so Catherine's just like, mm -hmm, like, obviously, cause the two of you were like, yeah, the gimp. And I'm like, I, what? And <laughs> is his face covered with a leather, leather mask? I don't know anything about it. And if I were like a more, um, I guess, professional person, I would like research this whole culture first, but I think it's fun to be ignorant and then be explained, have things explained. Oh, well, that's the best because you know how you have no preconceived notions. You've like watched 30 minutes of Fifty Shades on an airplane and then like went with it. <laughs> right. Well, I have friends who do sex work in Australia, but they're like, they do sex work. Like they have sex from, I mean, that's, it's not. Yeah, dumb. they have legal brothels and stuff, yes, which exactly. is nice. Right. They don't, they don't really do BDSM as far as I know. So my exposure to like BDSM is really like, I read an article in the New York Times recently by a dominatrix, you know, <laughs> like that was, you know, and it was that consent. I'm like, wow, I really understand this world, you know, but like, I don't, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so, um, right. Okay. So. And I, the only I, time I really know is from Catherine. I mean, one time she offered to like get me a job 
smoking cigarettes and blowing it into a guy's mouth. Oh yeah, right? I know that guy. <laughs> that guy's well known. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. I hate. I feel that like guy. my mom. My mom knows that guy. At this point, <laughs> everybody knows that guy. You know, like. He's, yeah, I don't smoke or else I would have done it, you know? I mean, this doesn't give anything away. Well, you're not away, really he... smoking. You're just like kind of yeah. sucking it in and then blowing it down his gas mask. Oh, yeah. it just and sounds like I got queasy when you said, because I hate the smell of cigarette smoke. Smoking. You the idea smoking. of just like blowing smoke, even though the guy's like so into it, I'm like, it just makes me want to vomit. Um, and it's the cigarettes. It's not even the guy, you know, it's like, although he sounds oh, like he's, real... he's puke worthy. Yeah. yeah. One time we spent an entire session and he talked about like how he'd met the guy from Weezer and t- like <laughs> ranked their albums, like worst to best. <laughs> It, that was I should have been getting paid, Yo. like way more because I was being tortured in that moment. Yeah, it was a nightmare. <laughs> That's true torture. It's like, what are you a music critic? I just want to say, like, he he looks like Buffalo Bill. Right? Oh yeah. So, oh, he looks yeah. Like, really? I, I, yeah, and that gives nothing away except how many people look like that. So Eve, <laughs> like, Wait, one Buffalo thing I, in, in Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I just found that guy kind of hot. I don't. I think. What? He's- oh. <laughs> well. You know, I mean, start walking far, around because as far as serial you killers run go. into these people. You yeah, do, you, you, that's that was always sort of the the funny thing is like accidentally seeing any of these people outside of the environment. Mm-hmm. And then you're both like, ah, like you know, I in New York City. I've tried yeah, to I mean, that's just so many people in New York. You know, you're like, oh, maybe I'll walk down this block. You know, and then nothing for years. And then, you know, you just go, well, I guess I had sex with them and then I'll never see them again, even though we're neighbors. But then it's like there's well, somebody would- <laughs> torture at a dungeon in all of New York and then you run into them on the subway. That's crazy. I- I like that you can't run into people that you are trying to run into. But when I hear her, Shayla, talk about real estate and getting a done, like all I'm thinking is like, that sounds so hard. I want nothing to do. Like, I'm impressed you even began taking the steps to do something like that sounds yeah. actually difficult, like really difficult. Well, that's like, actually the neighbor thing is actually really smart because if you have super loud neighbors and you fuck them and they're trying to avoid you, they will never make noise again. So maybe I should ah, fuck my neighbors yeah. because <laughs> they're in, they're insufferable. My neighbors, in my apartment are like children and they karaoke every other night and they're a nightmare. And so maybe I should just fuck them and they'll go away. That's a really good idea. I mean, you know, innovation. I think, I think it's like, for me, <clears throat> I'm only happy to see someone I've had sex with when I've planned it, when I'm like, when my hair looks like this, basically. But most of the time, I'm like, you know, just like a mess. And you you leave your apartment trying to look nice. And then the, the fucking cloudy, like disgusting New York City air just like gets on your face and... You know, I mean, I, it drives me nuts that I think about Carrie Bradshaw. And she's like, as I wash the city off my face, you know, and I'm like, he's right. I hate it. It's true. Like, but, you know, but she's like living in like a beautiful studio and she like writes freelance and affords it. And I'm like, fuck you. But she's right about that one thing. But anyway, I look like shit when I see people I've slept with usually. Wait, so when, okay. So I'm kind of, I'm just curious about like your your kind of journey, like your journey, just to make it sound <laughs> just so, I know, it's like yeah. your journey to shitting on people for money, but you run the show. Do you know what I mean? Like you're not doing it under somebody else's roof anymore. You've got the roof. You've got the poop. Like what's going on? And it's like, follow your bliss and doors were op- open where once there were walls. And you're like, I love shitting on people. I love it. Joseph Campbell. You know, just like, I mean, does everybody know that quote? You guys know that quote? It's like a real legit quote. Um, quote and it's like Joseph Campbell, who's like, um, some like kind of one of the fathers of the self-help movement, you know, and he says, follow your bliss and doors were open where once there were walls, something like that. So and gross. I'm like, you know, but <laughs> Joseph doesn't know. Some people, you know, like their the doors to be closed and locked <laughs> so that they can be shitting on people for money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how did you even get here? Like, how did you figure out that you wanted to be a dominatrix? Uh, I, yeah. well, I love a weird job and like, I've done all kinds of weird, like weird gigs over the years. And um, I mean, I was a stripper for a long time mostly because I, I wanted to piss off my parents when I was 18. So I was like, oh, fuck this. I'm going to become a stripper. And that worked <laughs> out pretty well, actually. And I just, then, you know, 
I just didn't go to law school. That was what I, <laughs> that's, that should have been it. That should have been it. I should have just not gone to law school. I wonder if I can use that now, like retroactively. Well, you know what, mom, I didn't go to law school either. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I could just like, for some reason, I'm like thinking of you like up there and like somebody's filming or taking a photo and you like give it to your parents for the holidays. You're like, hi, dad. You know, I'm like, <laughs> how do you like now? Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and, but are you, you're not Jewish, right? No. Right. Because I'm just thinking like, like the Jewish way of like, well, back in the day, the Jewish way of pissing off your parents was being like, I'm, I'm marrying a black man, you know, and this is like, oh, my parents are Southern Baptist. That would right. also work. Yeah. Right. You know, and yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's like, I oh, got, I once said that in Australia to a bunch of older Jews and they were like, oh my God, never. And I was like, don't even fucking start. <laughs> I, I see you. I know you and I see you. <laughs> but yeah, Southern Baptist, it's like not even hidden. Right. One time my my uh, I'm from Texas, but yeah. my great grandmother, she was so funny. She uh, when I was like 12, she went on this really kind of racist tirade, which was not unusual for like 80 year old women in uh, the 90s. But she one time she told me she's like, oh, you can't date black men. You can't date Mexican men. You can't date Jewish men uh, because they like she had all of these examples. Right. I mean, that were horribly what, racist. What was the Jewish one? I want to know. The oh. Jewish one was um, because they'll never buy you nice things. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, that's fine. Um, so I started asking her, I was like, well, what about Japanese men? What about Italian men? And she goes, well, you can't date Japanese men. And I was like, and she also goes, you also can't date German men. I was like, why? She goes, because we were in a war with them. And I'm like, Mima, you have to, you can't hate the Germans and the Jews. You kind of have to pick a side here. You really <laughs> have to like, take a stand. <laughs> Like what's left here? Yeah, seriously. You can just date your brother, basically. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, we're from the South, so that might have been a great yeah. option. And in fact, he's, a, I mean, he really impressed my parents. He's an engineer. He lives in like on the beach in California. So that might have been a good choice. With the gays? He lives near the gays? In he California? lives near the gays. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. If only they knew. Where does he live in California? Like what part? He lives in Redondo Beach. I don't know. I hate California, so I don't pay that much attention to the geography, Me but too. I know that Me he too. surfs frequently so i'm assuming it's beach is he liberal or is he pretty conservative he's pretty liberal yeah right okay. yeah, yeah i, I mean think, he's, he's a good kid to be honest i think you're sort of an engineer because i've seen the way those chains and shit have to hook into the ceiling to be hanging yeah, that's true. Shit. you should fucking tell them you'll be like you want to see some shit i'll show you i'll show you some shit like <laughs> wow you do have to do a little bit of engineering um for like when you're suspending people, you have to kind of calculate their weight and then multiply it by 10 if they're going to be moving. So, and make sure that like your uh, dad YouTube taught me everything that I needed to know about construction though. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you you built your dungeon, right? I if I remember correctly, because yeah. I remember I was sort of like very loosely following you only because like my life was falling apart. So I was very self-involved more so than normal. And, um, but I remember like you were talking about how you were, <laughs> fashioning everything yourself building it designing it obviously but like how you know like I built shelves once and I was like round of applause there it is I am I am everything but you, well, you built a fucking place I was poor and I was stubborn um so I thought well this will I won't buy furniture I will just make the furniture and because how hard can it be and it turns out it's very a lot of it's very hard um so I did a lot of improvising and there's if you'll I built a for the new dungeon, I built a bondage table that has an adjustable back on it and it creaks every single time you get on it. And rather than building a new one out of like weight rated lumber or like real nice lumber, rather than stuff I found, like I stole off a construction site somewhere, uh, I've just reinforced it with like metal brackets and to wear it and then just keep screwing things in tighter when they creak too much. I'm like, this is fine. This will be fine for the next 24 to 48 hours. And uh, you get some gimp to build it for you. Isn't that the whole thing? Like, oh, the gimps are useless. You don't you have to really give them specific <laughs> instructions because they're very stupid when it comes to everything else. Like they don't they don't know, really know how to make decisions on their own. So you have to direct. That's why they're the gimp is they need you to control them because right. they're fucking useless otherwise. Wow. I just hate them already, which is, I guess, the whole point, isn't it? It's yeah. Like <laughs> you, you know what's funny, like, just about your, how you so easily, like, this This is in your nature, right? Like, I know when I, we were working together, and also when I was starting to kind of, like, try to figure out how to sell my socks here for money, right? I messaged you. I was like, I just need a couple of tips. 
And I used to think I was like a dominant female. And in, in many ways, I think I'm just loud. I'm, I'm loud is what I am. Um, because how casually you're just like, no, this is what you say. You say, this is the price. If you don't like it, find someone else, deal with it. And I was like, ah, like I, cause I come from customer service. I don't even know how to, how to act like that. And so I think it's just like this world, I guess that you find it's either for you or not for you. And I found like, I would be a horrible dom. I just don't think I have it in me. Like how you just have to you- set boundaries. And like, that's what taught me the boundaries is working in customer service. Cause I worked retail for a long time. And if it paid a living wage, I would go back to retail. I loved working in retail. Um, but between that Wait, and being why? Str- It was fun. It was really fun. You meet different people every day. You get to like dress them up like little Barbie dolls. I worked in a shop where women would take, would bring their daughters for their first like big girl job clothes. And so I got to dress them like little Barbies. It was amazing. (laughs) And it was so much fun. And And I was also really good at it. And I was the only- Now you just do that to men. So- Well, yeah, now I do that to men. Now I dress them up like little Barbies and it's really sweet. Yeah, yeah. I don't don't have a lot of cross-dressing clients because I find most of them- see the feminization as inherently humiliating rather than inherently power, like empowering. And Mm. so I, I tell them, I'm like, if you think being a woman is embarrassing, then get the fuck out. Like if you want to wear a corset and heels and lipstick, because you want to feel pretty, then I'm, I'm your girl. Like, let's do it. Right. I mean, okay. So first of all, I'm like, I, I noticed. And then also I saw this on your Instagram. I love that you have like pit hair. You have like, Oh Yeah. And it's oh, like, cause it's so counter to like what I would assume, right? If you're like, I'm looking at your photos and it's like, you have this dungeon and you're so hot. And then it's just like, and I've got fucking pit hair. And so it's like, there's this like, it's a world I really don't know. Cause it's like, you think of it. I think if you're not in that world, you just assume that it's about like looking hot and like whatever. But actually what you're saying is that like, you just apply your own values to it. You're not really trying to fit into a stereotype. Well, and that's the thing with sex workers, um, everybody, like there's a fetish for everything in the entire universe, no matter what it is. And you kind of pick and choose what works for you and what you're comfortable with. Back when I was dancing, I, you know, was shaved head to toe. I wore, you know, cute yet uncomfortable outfits. I like dressed for the men. And now as a dominatrix, I'm like, people are are drawn to you, especially as a, like an independent dominatrix, people are drawn to you based on what you feel really passionate about and because they're passionate about it. And so once they see you embracing it like fully as a lifestyle choice, they're like, okay, she knows what's up. I'm going to go see her because she's just as into this thing as I am. Right. And so there are a lot of sex workers who have no hairy armpits, but there's also a fuckload of dudes with a hairy armpit fetish or like a natural fetish mm-hmm. um, or like a stink fetish. Like this traps stink really, really well. And I have a bunch of clients since I am a shit queen. I have a bunch of clients who are really into like stinky feet and stinky butts and stinky armpits and like belly button goo. And so there will be days when I'm prepping for a client where I just like don't shower for a couple of days because to really just bake in the musk and I, I, they love it. They love it. You're describing my Wednesday. It's just my belly button filled with goo like, and I smell like that's shit. That's the thing. Like that's, I think that's why I ended up being a dominator because I was like, I'm fucking sick of shaving my legs. I'm sick of showering regularly. This is bullshit. I need to get paid for this. And, and now I do. So that's amazing. Somebody like, it's, like a couple of times people have gone down on me and they've been like, kind of requested that I let it kind of sit longer oh yeah but I can't do it I just can't maybe you know maybe I I don't know I haven't found the right one yet I gotta I gotta find someone I can really let see I mean oh, Catherine can you do that can what you- let let my pussy sit in itself and then let, it a little then bit let, like Mark go down on you or someone go down on you yeah I mean, well, I was just thinking like when you said that, I remember this guy that I called the motorcycle princess because he had a motorcycle and he had the fucking hair and he had the jacket and everything. And then it kind of like slowly evolved into like realizing he's just this giant pussy. Like I had to, <laughs> my dog ate an entire box of chocolate, right? And we got home to see that. My mom had sent it. My roommate put the box on the counter. The dog grabbed it, ate it all. So I like, because this wasn't my first rodeo with the dog doing some shit like this. I was like, we got to take the dog outside with some ice cream and some peroxide and I need to make him puke. Right. So I was making the dog puke and this guy was going, uh, uh, and I was like, are you serious right now? And then like, he went down on me and I stopped shaving once upon a time, a long time ago, because I thought I had herpes because I got the hair follicles infected. 
And I spent like five days thinking I had herpes at age 18. And I was like, my life is over. And they were like, it's folliculitis. So I was like, I'm never shaving again. And this guy went down on me and he like was like, "Eh, eh." and I was like, what's your problem? And he, he was like, I just prefer it shaved. And I should have broken up with him then, but I didn't. Um, because you know, I had no self-respect at the time. Um, and maybe still now, but you know, so what was the question? I <laughs> the question was, where are you from? No, it was <laughs> Reno. That explains What's a lot. your sign? You're like, and then this guy was eating my pussy and he didn't like that it was hair. <laughs> but um, I just have to say like- Shayla's an Aquarius. I just want to say, okay. I'm an Aquarius. Yeah. The Catherine is I just like, it. Every kind of neurotic behavior that she like displays, she's like, I'm a Capricorn, I'm a Capricorn, I'm a Capricorn. Like, and if I'm like late or if I'm, if I like wear a colorful shirt, she's like, you're such a Gemini. And I'm like, okay, Catherine, like this was your shirt that I, you know, like, <laughs> like this, whatever it is. But I mean, I also like secretly love it, but to her, I just have to pretend I don't like it because um, I don't want her to feel too powerful, you know? Um, just like she pretends to hate journaling. She fucking, thank I do. I do you hate journaling. Listen, I do hate. Listen to she has Catherine, listen. you should start journaling. It's amazing. Okay, no, you know what? Well, you know what? Actually, I now I might listen because Shayla she's never hilarious. even told you. Shayla never. Sorry, I'm like I'm totally like like um just go like what is it called? Just railroading you. But Shayla wouldn't even tell you to go to an AA meeting, and yet she's like, you should fucking journal. You yeah, dumb bitch. Absolutely. You do, do you journal? Do you I journal, do. Shayla? I do. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, uh-huh. that's your book whatever you're journaling is your future book i have to say it's it's, uh-huh. it's how she just you see how she just pivoted away from from acknowledging no but but it's true it's we're true. here to tell you Catherine, you have a problem and when you don't journal you hurt other people and i'll oh, tell you yeah. is this like um, an intervention? it'll just it keeps you sane right because if you have a bunch of swirly anxious thoughts which knowing you is like a 24 7 experience for you um <laughs> you if you it's just it's really just a matter of making like a trash pile outside of your brain and that's what the journal is i, I love how wow. Catherine. i just saw your expression when she said that um it's like like knowing you it's like a 24 7 thing you felt so seen just now. Yeah. Like I could tell that you were like, no, oh my God, I do. But my when, head is crazy. But she, she spoke to me the way she said it. It's like making a trash pile out of my brain. And yes. maybe that's the way to look at it. I mean, yeah, I, I we, we did work together. I do forget that we did work together. I, she could have was, seen you on the street. You were my favorite manager. That. You were my favorite manager. Oh, I love that. Oh God. Yeah. I, that really, thank you. I, I really, I really liked working with you. I liked working there, you know, with the, with the, not, I didn't like everybody. There was a, I don't think I've told Eve this story yet and maybe we should save it to the end, but the day, do, do you remember the day, um, Emerald Dominique Pearl had one day there and it kind of oh this was the fight yes the, the oh fight. yeah oh man it I remember I came in I used to be a not nice person this like beautiful right. angelic creature you see in front of you today used to be really kind of a mean bitch was this um, when you were drinking this is when I was drinking right. and mm-hmm. so Catherine was managing that day and two other girls, like it was my day off and two other very kind, very sweet women had both texted me like, oh my God, this girl just started. You're going to hate her. And so (laughs) my first thought is not, oh, well that sucks, but it's my day off and I'll deal with her at another point. No, I came in because I was looking for a fight. I was like, I'll be there in half an hour. Yeah. And so, and I'm just like sitting in the office, like just to paint the picture, like this girl has arrived and it's her first day. And I'm like, what's your name? And she gives me three names. And I'm like, you need one name. Can you what pick was one name? What was it again? The three names were Emerald, Dominique, Pearl. And I was like, just pick one. And she was like, Emerald. And and like, she was just pop kicking off from the jump. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, I know something is going to happen. It's going to get world, world star. It's just like a matter of when, like, will my shift be over by the time this, this happens and then Shayla shows up to work and I'm like oh (laughs) like and I'm just like I'm just gonna (laughs) just gonna let it let it whatever is gonna happen happen because you can see I had cameras so you could see into uh, not the rooms where the sessions took place but any other room so I could see women talking and I knew you by their gestures who they're talking about because this girl started pissing everybody off one by one so I see him in the smoking room like like, and I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, fuck. And they're walking through the halls and then they're coming in the office. And I'm just like, this is, I'm like, this is about to get fucked up. So then Shayla shows up to work 
And I think you were hungover. I, I was remember. incredibly hungover. Oh yeah. yeah, I was dying. And so that just made me more angry and irritated about the whole thing. And we had avoided the dressing room because that's where Emerald was. And so we were just bouncing back and forth, holding little mini conferences on what to do in the smoking room and then in the office and then in the smoking room, in the office. We just go back and forth down this long hallway trying to figure out what to do about this woman. And what was she doing that was pissing you off? Or- she was endlessly abrasive just off yeah. the cuff I walked in I said hi I'm Shayla she goes are you a man and I was like as opposed yeah. to like a, a woman like what I mean gender is fluid but like what like what and she goes well it does ask if you're transgender on the application and I was yeah. like so this is how you're going to introduce yourself to me wow. and I I, so- I vaguely remember you coming out of that room going like who this fucking bit? And I'm like, uh oh, you know, and mind you, there's business going on, like in the dungeon, right? There oh, yeah. Clients, clients are coming here. and going. Yeah. <laughs> and so this, this shit was really starting to kick so, off. All right. So I'm, I'm like, OK, so then what happened? Well, and then she starts haranguing somebody else about like nail polish color and oh, that is slutty. And oh, why do you eat bacon? And just go yeah. on and on and on. Well, and then like eating bacon was too much, but <laughs> being <laughs> vegan <laughs> was also too much because oh, okay. beans, there was something wrong with beans. Like, <laughs> Just was- endlessly abrasive to anyone. Anything you said to her, she would have a problem with it. And she I would, would make lo- that problem known. I would love it if she was like Jewish and she's like, why do you eat bacon? It's trafe. You know, like just like <laughs> kind of like bring you religious. Yeah, I mean, that would have been fine if she was like, oh yeah, no, bacon is dirty and terrible. And we would have been like, okay, that's, that's great. We just won't right, put right. it next to your lunch in the fridge. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, it was, it was a nightmare. And then. I think she realized that she'd pissed off all the day girls. And so the night shift starts coming in mm-hmm. and, and th- this is chaos, by the way, like when this is happening, cause it's like shift change. Right. So there was this brand new manager. It was her first day. She had this like furry hat on her head, very soft. She lasted like four days there. Totally. Oh yeah. Right. It was rough. And sh- she came in and I'm like, hello, you know, and I'm like sweating. It was endlessly hot in the area that I worked, which like you're boiling alive in there. And I'm, j- I'm just like, hello uh here's the deal but then like the other girls are arriving and wh- and this girl is like the, you can feel the tension brewing right like it's really there are more women there than should have ever been and there were like meets going on so i was which means like we're sending in the women to like meet the men to for him to pick who he wants to session with everybody's so every- there's like 25 women and we're all dressed we're all wearing yes. like fishnets and stilettos uh, yeah. and we're going one by one to meet the client and I think there were two meets going there on. There were so two we meets. One it was psychotic. The and I have a feeling without I mean, we should go back and find the date. I have a feeling it was a full moon. I don't know. Like, I, I just <laughs> it know. might have been it actually was Mercury like, was in I feel retrograde. like the anniversary of it was maybe a month ago. I feel like it yeah, happened because Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna have to look this up because you know the date? You know the date? Uh, I'll have to find it. It was in like, like Instagram memories or something like that, because I remember afterwards I took a selfie with one of the girls that I did like, and she was just like, love this bitch. And I was like, yeah, of course, like nobody on Instagram needed Mm -hmm. to know what had just happened. Yeah. Um, But what, what happened was she (laughs) had been antagonizing me and had been antagonizing our other friend who worked there, who was just the nicest, nicest, kindest, sweetest being. And And, and like an OG there too. So yeah, had been there for many years. Yeah. Why are you poking the people you should be like, you know? Yes, exactly. And so she, at some point there's like 20 girls in this room and she had said something to our friend, the Emerald had said something to our friend and she said something like, oh, well, you need to have her protecting you or something like that, uh, motioning to me. And So our friend just like jumps in and like gets in her face and is like, I don't need shit from you. I don't need shit from anybody else. Like, this is garbage. Like you have been an asshole all fucking day. Yeah, I I heard, I just want to say, because from the office, I heard, bitch, you've been sweating me all day. And I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, uh-oh. Like I'm in the office and the girl with the furry hat and the manager, she's like, what's happening? And I'm like, I'm like, why don't you go look? I'm like, you go look. I'm going to stay in the office. You sacrificed like, her. I didn't I did, know I that. Did. did you? I she came I, in out of the goodness of her own heart. No, <laughs> I, I was so like, funny. I was like, you might want to check it out. There's something, something happening in there. <laughs> so this, this all goes down. And so Emerald makes the mistake of like putting her hand on this girl's throat. And what? it's like, who, who in a what? million years goes for that mm-hmm. as your first, like, and it she doesn't was even a- push her. She doesn't do anything. She fucking 
cuffs her. Goes for the throat. Goes for the throat. And so an all out brawl starts. And like, this is the craziest thing to me. (laughs) Who in their right mind walks into a sex dungeon that is full of women, like full of women that are armed like there are actual weapons in this establishment and dominant are on your energy. side because yeah. you are new and they have like these are all their friends you've essentially like you've tried to invade russia in the winter like what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> and so she and an all-out brawl starts and you know there's and like women don't fight cleanly like so there's like hair pulling and like this, biting a couple of nails broke down. oh yeah i bit this bitch and where did you bite her like on her fingers because she had a hold of this girl's bun so i just like bit her fingers and she let go well and Um, when i that's when i because i heard i heard the kind of like scuffling and the screaming and the you know what i mean like the like and so i come in and i like see this thing that you'll never get to see again like this moment in time where it's like all of these doms dressed up in this fucking world star hip hop i'm like i'm like do I stop it? Do I get the camera out and make us all some money? I'm like, do we get the clients in so they can fucking come and we can get it all out? I'm like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And like, it was the furry haired manager who I think pulled, you know, oh yeah, out she of there. pulled her out and like threw yeah. her into the vestibule. There's like a locking vestibule. And, and yeah. she pulled who out? She pulled this chick out. Emerald. Emerald yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so then I go to the office and I call dad. That's what I called the owner. <laughs> And, and I was like, you know, this shit just happened. I mean, Emerald's fired, I'm pretty sure, right? I mean, I know she's, you know, she's got heart, but like, I don't think she belongs <laughs> here. And, um, she, you know, you could see her taking the elevator down, right? So, th- so the owner comes in and I explain what happened. And like, meanwhile, our friend whose throat she grabbed pulls a fingernail out of her hair, right? Which presumably belonged to Emerald. And, and she's like, ew! And we're all like, oh God, ah, that! Like, then... <laughs> you see Emerald come back, right? Do you remember this shit? Oh yeah, right? oh yeah. And so so I'm like, oh my God, fuck, fuck me. And so then the owner goes to the door and you see them have a conversation in the camera. And then he closes the door and he walks to the kitchen, like, and you can see this all in the camera. And he grabs a Tupperware that had been drying <laughs> from the counter. And then he goes back out and gives it to her. And I was like, really? Goodness, fucking, that's the Tupperware? Like, I mean, is that, that I want my fucking are? Tupperware? Not yeah, my finger, yeah. my Tupperware. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I just, I remember leaving work that day and I, I called my friend and, went, and I was like, what I've seen today, it might have been like, a, you know, a modern miracle. Like, you're just not gonna, you can't, you can't even fucking pay for it. Like what right. I saw, I, I saw wish he turned me on. He, yeah. You saw Jesus heal the sick. You were like, I saw yeah. some kind of shit I never in my life expected. Yeah, um, it, was, it was it was a surprisingly chill workspace for how many women worked there at a time. I mean, there'd be nights where there'd be 25 women staying in like a 10 by 10 room. It was crazy. Um, and there was obviously there was drama, but it was all that kind of little tiny passive aggressive drama. Right. It was never full on just brawl right. like it was that day. And it was uh, glorious. It was really beautiful. Well, Brought us together a as, a, as a community. <laughs> oh, really. it sounds amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I will say there wasn't like a ton of screening for like these people getting to work there. Right? Oh, no, not at all. Like, I think and, the only person yeah. I didn't what I did a couple of manager shifts and I hired a couple of gals. And the only person I didn't hire was the one who was like actively on meth in the interview. That was it. Yeah. That was all everybody else. It's like, like a, a pretty oh, small minded move on like, your part, I think. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I mean, she could have used the job. And granted, there were clients who liked to smoke meth. They would have been a match made in heaven and they would have yeah. made the dungeon a lot of money because they would have been done like 24 hour sessions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Like if you weigh 600 pounds, great. There's a fetish for that. If you have like 12 kids and can shoot breast milk out, like are actively lactating, like, great, let's do it. It's just, it doesn't matter who you are. Oh, schizophrenic. Great. We get two for the price of one. Like it doesn't matter who you are. You can get a job at a sex dungeon. It's no problem. So then, well, yeah. You know. Well, I was going to ask her about like a, your dungeon. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, look at your great mind. I was going to say, me too. Because <laughs> I, I do feel like, you know, you were very professional when you showed up. I mean, it's funny because I do say like that is the one job I've had where women would show up like two hours late to work, like they're on time. They're like, I'm getting my nails done. Like I'm I'm here, aren't I? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> well, you're late, but uh, yeah, fine. You're here. I'm, I'm happy you're here, you know. Um, but I feel like you, you know, the 
there were different realms. There were people who were pro professionals and then there are people who were just like giving something a shot. And now you're running your own business. I, and I've seen the photos of, of other women that I know there, all of whom were always very professional and took it seriously to an extent. Right. And so how do you, how have you decided like who you're going to work with? Yeah. And like, so, what's, your kind of, what's your kind of vibe as well? Like what you want the, your dungeon to be like, like I, it's funny because I, so I don't actually run a house. I don't, it's not like you can walk in and get an appointment with a dom there. Um, they're all independent doms. And so they just rent from me. And it's, it's been, it's been mostly in the beginning, I was kind of like, okay, like you during COVID, all the rental dungeons were closed and legally I was allowed to stay open since I didn't have any employees. And there were a lot of people who still had to work because they didn't get unemployment or, you know, this, that, or the other. And so I was able to rent a dungeon space to them. And it was great because at that point I was like, literally anybody can come in. I will show you how to clean the place up. If I get any complaints, like obviously you're fired as a renter. Now I'm a lot more selective now that I've moved. And I, but also a bunch of the, the dungeons in town have closed the rental dungeons. So I'm getting all of these messages from all of these people that I've never met before being like, Hey, I hear you're offering your dungeon up for rent. And I am um, like, okay, who do you know? Who have you worked for? Like, I need a reference from, for you. Like, is there, who told you about my space? I'll reach out to them. And if it's somebody that I don't like, or doesn't do a good job of cleaning, I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I'm full up on renters. Mm. Uh, but I always kind of walk them through and be like, okay, here's how this works. Here's the vibe I expect. Here are the, my expectations for you. Here are my boundaries. Um, and if you fuck up, then that's fine. You just aren't allowed back. Um, and Cause there's, you know, there's people it's, it's a sex industry. There's that level of, there's some people who treat it really professionally and some people who treat it like a side gig. And both of those are valid and both of those are fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but I only want people who are going to take care of my toys in the way that I, I would take care of them. So that's, that's cool. And the, like the vibe of the space, I don't know. I kind of, when I was envisioning it, I was, I was explaining this to my partner. I was like, I kind of wanted to be like the living room of like a bitchy West Elm manager who like keeps cutting <laughs> your hours and is just mean to you for no reason. <laughs> and I think I've, I think I've achieved that. I think I've done a good job. There's lots of plants. There's lots of like, you know, kind of gold accents and, and how do you like, do you, cause we talked about like you getting, are you, so are you completely sober? Like you don't use anything or is it, you just don't drink. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I, I'm still on the cigarettes. I switched to vaping, but I think that made it worse. I mean, um, yeah, it's like, but so you're like in your sober mind basically. Yeah. Um, and so, um, do you feel like that had a, like, do you feel like you could have done this without becoming sober or how do you feel like it impacted or those? Yeah, things? absolutely. Absolutely not. I would never have been able to do this if I had not gotten sober. Um, I mean, I, I witnessed guess, this. Happen. Yeah. You saw it firsthand. I, and I, I don't want you to lose your thought, but it was like, you know, you and I were both drinking a lot when, when we worked there and I, you know, and I was like, whatever, but just who you've turned into, not that it's like, not that you weren't that person, but it was like, you were holding yourself back, you know, yeah. by it, because now you like are completely like you can even feel it like emanating from you like in your power whereas just then I mean you were just doing what you were doing but like it felt like you had it all within you the whole time but then by making that choice you were able to release it, it it's been really fun to see see we, I, we do have fun Eve we do have fun <laughs> and you were like what like 28 ish do what when you became sober you were like 28 oh yeah yeah. yeah. Sorry. A Siri keeps popping up on my computer and I'm like, knock it off. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, I was 28 when I got sober. Um, and actually on the 28th of this month, I'll have three years. Wow. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's true. Like, at the bare minimum, I was spending all of my money on like beer and cocaine. Mm -hmm. And so I would not have been able to afford a dungeon. Right. And also <laughs> like getting sober allowed me to leave the dungeon that I worked at uh, because I mean, Catherine can tell you it was uh, on the best of days, an unpleasant workplace and on the worst of days, like a horribly violent, abusive relationship. And what do you mean? Uh, broke, violated all kinds of crazy labor laws uh, at the yeah, bare minimum. Mean. It was, right. oh, it was a nightmare. Right. And so that, and but I felt like I am stuck here. This is the only reliable way for me to make money. And once I got sober and I wasn't like 
I wasn't stuck in this cycle of like, go to the dungeon, go get wasted, go to the dungeon, go get wasted. Cause what other job would hire me? I was either drunk or hung over at all times. Mm -hmm. And, but once I got sober, I was like, oh, I can show up on time more reliably. I can be there for clients. I can be there for myself. I'd started saving some money and I was like, oh, this is fine. And a couple of my girlfriends had gone, had left a different dungeon and gone independent and they walked me through it. They said, you're going to be fine. And the worst that could happen is you go back to the dungeon. I was like, oh, you're right. Like, it's not, I had this kind of sense of impending doom. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. But I mean, let's be real. That dungeon was garbage and they would have taken me back in a heartbeat. They always Uh, do. I, I, it's funny. Everyone's like, oh, I'm never coming back or you're not allowed back. You then like see them back there. I'm like, oh, look at that. Two years later, you've returned. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, it's crazy. It's insane. And I mean, there have been women who have committed all kinds of serious business property damage who are like, Oh yeah, it's two years later. I'm back. Like happy to be back. You guys. It's like, no, you're not. You've just <laughs> right, yeah, a yeah. point in your life. I think this is a good idea. That's how I feel about nannying. Every time I go back to nannying, it's like a new low for me. It's like me you finding, it's like finding me like using again. I'm like, yeah, I gotta take care of another kid. Cause I just like, I love kids, but I hate taking care of other people's kids for money. That's my, I'm relating, I'm relating. Um, <laughs> well, you're essentially you're doing probably, what we do because they're just overgrown yeah. children. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. see, look at how quick she is. She could be a comedian. Like I was like, I was like, I got my joke. I got my joke in the chamber. And then she, <laughs> <laughs> when you said before, it's like invading Russia in winter. I'm like, God damn it. That's fun. I know. Like, I, I just, it's been, it's inspiring to hear and not, and not that I, well, I do think about you. I don't think about you all the time, but I do think about you and like that, this came from like a desperate place because, you know, if you've been listening, which you say you have, like, I would say I've been in the most desperate place I've probably ever been in. And I've had to also like examine myself and why it feels so desperate and whatever. But yeah, it's like, there's hope there. Like to hear that your successes have come, not from like things going well or working hard and powering through, but more like I was in like this place and I had to make new decisions that maybe I didn't even want to make, but like I did and now look where you are. I mean, you know, you're teaching courses about what you do. I, I feel like I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you were less like public about what you did or you weren't really like actively. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure if I wanted to, at that point I, in my life, I was still very not ashamed of what I did, but not just not committed to it for the rest of my life. I was like, oh, this is fine. This is something that I'm doing. It's it's that it's that trick that uh, strippers tell you like, oh yeah, I'm in, I'm in college. I'm just doing this to pay my way through college. And don't get me wrong, the vast majority of them do. The vast majority of strippers just like do what they're doing and then they leave. But then there are a few lifers like me who get stuck in one form of sex, uh, sex work or another. And at this point, I wouldn't say that I'm stuck more so that I have chosen it. And like, I put my face on the internet. I am open about what I'm doing. I um, am literally, I'm thinking about literally uploading some shit clips to the internet because I'm like, this is what, who I am and what I do. And you deserve to see it. Like, right? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> do they deserve to see it? Do they deserve no. it? No, no they don't. I'm They'll saying. pay for it. It'll be behind a paywall, but still yeah, yeah. it's like exists on the internet. That's like only yeah, like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, OnlyFans has a terms of terms of service. Um, you can't buy porn with MasterCard anymore. Did you know that? No. Wow. Yeah. Oh, there's a whole, there's so it, it'll don't read it. It'll outrage you. Um, but yeah. it's yeah, there's been a big, huge the Pornhub got rid of 75 percent of its content content because they couldn't verify that the people who uploaded the video were the people in the video or have uh, what's called a 2257 it's a form that you have to keep on file for any porn performers Mm -hmm. so they didn't have any of that so they purged it because visa and mastercard had pulled all of their payment processing and they were like nope until you can verify that this is all uploaded which ultimately it's a good thing um because it proves that you know people the people appearing in the videos are those people and porn piracy is a huge and crazy thing there's all kinds of people who will pirate clips off of OnlyFans or off of you know somebody's recording off a vhs tape that was released in 1987 and putting it on there um you do have a big problem with porn piracy and you do have a big problem with revenge porn. However, uh, credit card companies pulling any and all funding is, or not funding payment processing is not the answer to this. Um, the answer is, uh, I mean, honestly, just keeping better records and verification, like age verification, huge. Um, Catherine, you can't get on OnlyFans. You've been denied for making OnlyFans probably because (laughs) your phone number and your email address are like in the US, but your IP address is coming from like the UK right now. And so your driver's Uh. license is being uploaded from a, I would try your passport um, when you try to do that again, (laughs) or I would make like an AVN stars. (laughs) Or you would what? An AVN stars. 
AVN Stars. Yeah, AVN is a adult video network. They are a, a kind of a large production company and they have their own version of OnlyFans. But oh. and also they are like we're at will. We're kind of at the the will of the payment processors. Like there are so few places where you can upload a photo of like human shit for like behind a paywall. OnlyFans won't do it. AVN Stars won't do it. Like Just for Fans won't do it. There's so many that where and I, it's funny because I want clips, which is a big porn clip like sale site where independent creators can make this stuff they just renamed everything so as not to piss off the payment process so like medical fantasy turned into medical fantasy play so just in case there's any indication that this person is not like a licensed medical right. professional it's like she's mm. wearing no underwear and like a crappy <laughs> like square nurse's cap it's, this is it's, no absolutely like not so much of porn has been like, I mean, I stopped watching porn for a while after the Me Too movement because I was like, so much of it was just so tinged with like rape. Like I just couldn't do it. And it's funny how like that was fine as long as nobody, oh, yeah. you know, like, like I mean, until now. And I was like reading articles as this was happening with Pornhub because I was reading stuff about women who had been raped and it was uploaded or whatever. And, you know, and, and um, or like you said, revenge porn and stuff like that. But taking a shit consensually it's like well this is just not right you know and it's like <laughs> being like raped and trafficked it's like well I don't, what are you gonna do you know but, uh, <laughs> but they like take a big stand on shitting um that's weird to me it's weird I mean I mean weird I guess the word is unethical immoral but um, it is well it, it is because if you've ever seen a guy get shit on you know they are enthusiastically consenting at every moment <laughs> yeah, to yeah. do that they are begging for right. it whereas the whole thing about these like women is that they're like weeping and it's like well maybe she's acting you know um, yeah yeah and like don't get me wrong like hot but at the same time like do it what, what is the there were a couple of porn companies that would do like a before and after like interview and so before she'd be like yes like i'm mm, you know i'm I've jessica and i'm i'm ready to do i'm so excited about this i'm so excited about having every hole like ripped apart until you could drive a semi through it like super stoked and then at the end they're just like crying and their mascara is <laughs> everywhere and they've got like <laughs> ripped fishnets on and they're like oh, eyelashes falling off yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I watched this this morning, so just. Uh, <laughs> I love the. I poop is so funny. I love it. I love that you're a shit queen. I love it. I I do. I do before we ask her that, can I just yeah. ask, like, when you're? I know you're teaching these classes. Like, do you? I just for my own. Are, are you weaving poop stuff in? Oh, absolutely. I um I teach a before the world ended. I taught an in person uh, water sports and other showers class because there's water. all kinds of showers. There's um <laughs> and so and that ended with a demo, which was really great. And I actually just taught a water sports like a strictly lecture water sports class as part of our seven days of domination series which is a series that we have a couple of times a year where we invite uh, between seven and 12 professional doms to teach whatever they want and so I did a water sports one like the psychology of water sports and, like and water sports for anybody who doesn't know being water like sports is a golden shower it's just like yeah. peeing on somebody um and so I did that uh, I separate. think upcoming, we have a psychology of hard sports class that's happening. I won't be teaching that one, uh, but I'm really excited to watch it because this is something that's fascinating to me. And hard sports being like shitting on people, shitting on people, shitting on people, sometimes, uh, lumped into hard sports is also Ruby showers, which is menstrual blood and or wow. Roman showers, which is vomit. What was the last one? Ah, Roman showers. Roman Rome showers. Why, 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 why is it called Roman showers? So funny. Because like why is it? the kind of like urban legend of like the vomitoriums. I don't know. You know have that. you never heard of that? You never watched like no. the Animaniacs episode on that? Um, I, I love that there's a child's episode about that okay oh yeah. yeah yeah it's it's about like eating so much during a feast that you have to have a special place to like throw it all up and okay, so that colloquially oh. has become known as a roman shower right roman or like every teenage girls <laughs> at least several time experience <laughs> it's just oh yeah, yeah. Like, oh absolutely lessons. it's so yeah. funny it is so funny because whenever i describe that to like a baby dom i'm like okay so what a lot of people do and she's like no i got this like and just <laughs> <laughs> Every woman knows how to throw up. My mm -hmm. God. Dance with the two ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all know. I remember like one time in college being like, I'm going to take up smoking to lose weight, which like lasted for like two days. I hate smoking. And then I was like, no, I'm just going to puke. And then I did that for like three days and then told all my friends, I was like, I have a problem. I'm bulimic now. Um, I, I really did. I like outed myself. I think I even told my dad, you know, I was like, I'm bulimic. I can't stop. And like, I could totally stop. I'd only just started. 
Um, but the point is all women know how to puke. Um, it's our superpower. Um, <laughs> um, so people are into puke, blood, shit, piss, anything else? Everything. They're into all kinds of shit. They're into all just all kinds of things. If you can name it, if it exists in the world, there's somebody that is jerked off to it or onto it. There's a whole like subreddit of people cutting up and ejaculating on like Nike shoes, like brand new shoes. That's nice. a surprisingly large community of people cutting up sneakers. And then like people who are into like inflatable rafts, like, you know, the pool floaties, like people love those. People love dry humping those. There's a ton of porn of that on the internet. All right. So I have to ask you, what are your jealousies, right? You know what ours are. We like started a fucking podcast in, in, in Omaha. Incredibly jealous of this. Yes. Um, <laughs> no. I'm also really, I'm jealous of your dedicated. Oh, like, oh, before you even get into complimenting us, which I am getting wet just for you saying that, <laughs> what are your this. jealousies in general, but in general, like, is there, any, oh, is there someone or something you're like unreasonably jealous of? Yeah. I am, uh, incredibly jealous of women who have time to get eyelash extensions. Um, <laughs> That's a, oh the dedication God. to that is something so that I could never do. It's like two hours every two weeks. It's so much time and I can't deal with it. And I'm so wow. jealous of their, of their eyelash extensions. I'm jealous of anybody who can keep a planner. I've never, I've never been struck oh, yeah. at that. Oh my God. Sorry. Oh, you're the worst. No, I have a fake planner. I have a pretend planner. I use it twice and then it like, it, then it rots. And I'm, I'm jealous of people who like regularly go to the gym um i don't i'm not and i can't i don't you um, look great you, you look, look like, like you do yeah you i mean it's all the roman showers it's perfect so uh, <laughs> <laughs> no it's uh yeah i don't i just don't know i don't like i have i just i gyms intimidate me they mm -hmm. scare the i mean for someone who is scared by nothing like gyms are the scariest place in the world for me and uh, people who like run regularly it's like i'm a woman who lives in new york i'm not running anywhere i've seen a lot of law and order okay like this ends <laughs> one way and it is death um so people who run outside i can't run outside and running inside on a treadmill is like other people are going to stare at me it's like i'm also a smoker this is not happening and <laughs> <laughs> so i guess people who go to the gym is like that's what i'm jealous of are you living in manhattan brooklyn i live in brooklyn yeah i live in bushwick oh my god yeah i won't ask you where because i feel like what you do i feel like maybe oh all of my clients are going to listen to this and they're going to yeah. be like trying to triangulate like where the light is coming from and hitting my bedroom wall <laughs> yeah, yeah. The windows. <laughs> totally i'm like i'm not gonna ask you too many details because i know that people might listen for yeah and what yeah, am i jealous about for you two yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, so, so now is like the, the part where you're totally um, able to compliment us. Uh, tell us what you're jealous of. Um, come on to us, you know, in a fun, pretty way, whatever you want. <laughs> I'm really jealous of a the fact that like y'all have a really solid friendship and like a really beautiful one. Like there's kind of obvious, like a really obvious chemistry there and a back and totally forth. Totally before just before we brought you well, in that's part of a healthy friendship the fact that you can argue and then do a podcast and both of you are just like like beaming and you're just like hi it's so good to see you I know what happened this week yeah. but the fact that you two have set aside like a dedicated time to work on a project and see it through to fruition um and which i mean y'all have a fuckload of episodes and you started what like two months ago oh God, and i love this, I love this. So, <laughs> you've never gotten joint compliments yeah that's the thing. Like with sex workers, we always say, oh yeah, let's do this thing. And then it never happens. And so I'm jealous of y'all's dedicated like time that you set aside for each other each week. That's really like, that's beautiful. That's like an amazing example of pl plus both of you are in different time zones. And that's an amazing example of planning and also a testament to your friendship that you guys like give a fuck about each other and also things. So, which is something that I don't give a fuck about at all. Um, so I'm really jealous of that. I am jealous of yeah. Catherine's marriage because i have been trying to lock mine down for ages like you are getting a passport that is not a u.s passport i'm so mad about it oh i'm so mad about it I, I i like my partner reassures me every single he got a, a visa and came over here he's from he's from europe too and he came over here in november and he goes oh my visa is good for four years and i have told him probably every single day since he landed before thanksgiving that like you won't need to renew it you'll get a spousal visa like if you have to renew it if you have to go through and renew an l1 visa like i will call dhs and i will report you as a terrorist and 
from the United States. Like you will marry me. And sure. like, he's very, he's very chill. I'm a very anxious person and he's very chill about it. He's very gentle and he's very patient. He's like, yes, babe. Like, of course, like, absolutely. Like I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And sometimes he makes jokes and I try to be chill about it, but he can see like the blood vessels just popping <laughs> behind my eyeballs. And he's like, babe, I won't do that again. I won't make those jokes again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So I'm jealous of your husband um, because I am a I am a uh, one of those anxious women that like must get married, um, and if I'm really I'm jealous of like your network. I'm really jealous because you seem to know so many people and have a really good handle on just like things in life. Like stand up comedy scares the fuck out of me. I've done it one time and it was part of like a small closed audience after I'd taken a class and like it scares the fuck out of me. It was exhilarating. I don't know how you do it all of the time or full time or even manage to do it now. Well, um, the fact no, that you haven't given up and been like, fuck it, I'm going to go work for like customer support for Apple or DoorDash or somebody. You're just like, no, I'm doing this thing. I'm committed to this thing. I'm good at this thing. And I'm going to rely on all of my connections and make new ones in order to continue to you know, follow my dream. I really admire that. Oh, my God. That's like, <laughs> oh my I know it's really I'm nice. I, yeah. But I just I, I thank, you. thank you game recognize game you know what I mean like you you gone and done something big yeah. for yourself and like just you know I I'm just saying like you're you're in the this is a group this is a thing we you know we're all very powerful in our own way some of us are a little more neurotic than others some of us know how to use our <laughs> our shit more wisely than others you know never do it for free is what I learned from you. But um, Catherine, when you, you know, told me about this podcast, you're like, everyone's doing better than me. I was like, yes, everyone is doing better than you, Catherine Henson, right now. You've had arguably the worst year of yeah. anyone that has Thank ever you. existed. And oh, you are still this. alive, which is mm. a, a miracle. Despite, you know, all of your insistence to the contrary, you're just like, no, fuck this. I'm going to die like every single day. I really, I that's just so fucking cool that you have, manage to just do this thing like you your apartment is so cute like yeah, I don't know if so this cute. is your apartment or if it's an Airbnb or like whatever like what kind of hand you had in the leaves behind you but it's cute it's cute <laughs> as shit you look it's my really screen healthy. <laughs> like you. you are doing the thing if I had to do this I would have broken down like 8,000 times well oh. I'm just thank you thank you you know I do appreciate the acknowledgement and you know I'm just I'm glad that I still get to know you you know like and I'm yeah, get to see too. you do what you're doing you never know, like the people that are going to touch you in your life, you know, not, not literally. I think you have like, you could do that too. Once. I would be thrilled. Like I'm happy to let you touch me at any point. So you've but, listened to quite a few of the episodes, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. A handful. Um, that is so nice. I mean, I, that's I, when I Venmoed you $25 and you were like, I don't even want to know how yeah. you know about my heating bill. Yeah. Um, oh. I told you that. I told you that. I think, did I not? Yeah, you were like, I don't even want to know about yeah. me. And then you, when well, you brought up the podcast, you were like, I think you've listened to this podcast. Will you be yeah. on it? That is so yeah. cool. I mean, we had a like a big bump last week because um, Kevin, who we had on, Kevin um, William Reed, promoted it. But it's just really <laughs> amazing when you just see like people listening. I mean, it's cool, you know, because it's like, I mean, we well, and yeah. cool, smart people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yes, so and right? then you saying these things, and I'm like. God, because also then I'm like, oh, so that's what comes across that I have a network. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like so cool that like, it's like, wow, somebody like hears it and then um, kind of gets the, the, like an idea of what is going on for us. And, and um, I don't know, I'm, I'm really, uh, God, I'm very lame right now. I'm like glowing. <laughs> I mean, you are glowing. You are glowing. Oh, I, I'm just, I'm really grateful that you decided to come on. I want you to plug your stuff yeah. right now. I know you have a lot to plug. Like I, think, I do. Oh, well, so. not that much. Uh, we yeah. are doing the next edition of seven days of domination. It is a, uh, like an online BDSM workshop that runs for seven days at a time. Um, the next one is in July or June. Our theme is daddy week because it's father's day. So we're getting all of our favorite <laughs> female daddies and uh, they're all teaching classes on a, a litany of subjects. All of the past classes are available online. That's at lolajean.com. That's uh, one of my co-hosts, the co-headmistress of the program. We're also working on a kind of a life coaching self-help thing called rehab center for insecure adults. Uh, which is designed to help you stop being the worst. And uh, that should come out later this year. Um, and is that BDSM related or is that just totally independent? Of that? Totally independent. We're taking a lot of um, 
a lot of stuff out of BDSM because a lot of like real super traditional BDSM is about being better and getting better and pushing like limits while still respecting boundaries. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of that carries over into day-to-day life. You know, you did mention that and I know we didn't go into it and we don't have time to, but like that is something that spoke to me because I'm realizing you said it's all about boundaries. And I'm like, I think finally learning and even I've talked about this separately to create boundaries, to actually have boundaries, which I, I don't. So, hey, you know, maybe- so we, Maybe you should journal a- about it. You should journal <laughs> okay, about your boundaries. Yeah. Okay, all right. You know what, I'm, I, do I set a boundary now? Don't say the word journaling to me ever again, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said this to yesterday, I mean, yesterday to somebody who I'm, the guy who I met at the uh, housemate thing who asked me what I do for fun. But I was like, we said the word, he said the word boundaries. And I was like, God, I love boundaries. I remember saying to my therapist, like, what the fuck are boundaries? And now I'm like, they just help you live your life better. And like, feel like you're, you're like actually here and and not just like a big fucking puddle. Anyway, shout out to boundaries. That sounds like an amazing, (laughs) that sounds like an amazing (laughs) workshop and that's online. Yeah, that's going to be online. That hasn't yet premiered, but it will uh, hopefully by the end of the summer. Um, and I am actually not taking any new BDSM clients right now. Um, yeah. schedule's a bit full, but, uh, at some yeah. I'm bound boundaries, boundaries. But once I return <laughs> from, I'm doing some summer travel. Once I get back, I expect to open the books up for that. And what's your, can you plug your Instagram or Twitter or whatever you, Oh yes. Uh, I can be found on all of the platforms, uh, Fat life, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I also have a TikTok, but there's nothing on it. Um, it at, too, yeah. at at yes, Miss Shayla, M I S S S H A Y L A. It's like Sheila, but way more white trash. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's Amazing. all of the things. I'm most active on Twitter. Uh, I find it the best place to shit post. So amazing. Well, you've been an amazing guest. Thank you for being here. Thank um, you. For the li- for the listeners, yeah. um, you're, you're welcome. I'm like, you're welcome for you giving me that <laughs> fucking amazing compliment that's going to keep me going this week. Um, and for all the listeners, follow the podcast at Everyone's Doing Better on Instagram and on TikTok. We've promised you we will post and you want to be there. Don't miss it. Oh my God, going fast. It's going to sell out. Um, and also, um, <laughs> please rate, like, subscribe to the podcast. Share it with your friends. Share it with your parents if you feel like they really need to know more about um, doming. Um, share with your gimp because we all know yeah. you know we all got one yeah yeah seriously <laughs> um and yeah thank you so much for being here thank you